Welcome to the Knights of Last Call. Sorry about that. We uh, we're waiting for Bob to pee. So, so uh, you know that's that's the way things go. So, another thirty minutes. Yes. Um, welcome to the uh, Knights of Last Call. My name is uh, Derek Melinda. Um, welcoming you to this kind of exciting bonus stream, which was put into motion by you. We had a tip goal, which was I was getting together with this group of uh, of guys here here to explain root. Um, and uh, something is up with the audio. All right. Oh, great. Sweet. Really? Because uh, it looks like our, our things are going up fine. Yeah. Camera audio. Oh, maybe there's camera audio still. All right. Uh, talk. Hello. Yeah. Uh, let me just open this refreshing Crown Royal Whiskey Lemonade. That's how delicious. <sighs> I'm going to have a bang. Oh, there you go. <laughs> How's the audio quality? Anybody uh, let us know? Can you hear us now? I don't know. What they say? Love that hat. Love the hat. Love Thank hat. you. Yeah, it is a nice hat. It is a good hat. Absolutely. Thank you. you My idea was Tinker? in uh, I might. My idea was to, uh, you know, if, when the session's over and the whole thing's over, have us all autograph it and give it away to one of the members. Oh, that's oh, cool. Nice. Very nice. So you're going to ruin it with our autographs. I mean, <laughs> inside we can uh, see it. Dirk laughed at the idea. Yeah, but fine. People like stuff. We when I mean, we give away books and it's like where we sign the inside. It's like, do you really want us to sign the inside? <laughs> like, you sure about that? Yeah. Uh, so our game master has uh, left because. Oh, well, we don't have any frames. So. Yeah, zero drop frames. Okay. Right in I want to worry about that. Yeah, that's probably some. Screw it up on there. I say, yeah. Yeah, hey, I'm worried. Audio. Can you guys hear us? Okay, give us some feedback on that. Can you guys hear us? Okay, give us some feedback on that. Yeah, that sounded pretty. That good. sounded pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Check from Dark uh, Hey Henry, how you doing? <sighs> ben says it's hey, still Henry, flipping. How you doing? It sounds pretty good. I am now the game master. All right, Bob, so what are we doing? I am now the game master. Fabulous game of Woodland Adventures. All right. I, uh, I go and I attack a squirrel. All right. Um, do you have any skills that are related to this event, this challenge? I, uh, I'm hungry. <laughs> I have squirrel riding. Does that count? Squirrel riding. Squirrel riding. Ooh. Ooh, you're right. I'll give you plus one from hunger pains. All right. All right. That is a... Uh, is that the six, right? It. Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, this squirrel that you, uh, you, you take a shot at, uh, um, you pin him right up, you're a ranger, right? Yeah, yeah. You pin him right, right, right through the eyeballs, awesome. right up against awesome. the tree. All right. Oh, yeah. Just, just hung up perfectly so you can see later. So I skin him. Absolutely. And then I have his fur. But you eat him, right? You were hungry. I eat the meat, but I wear the fur. I was okay. riding it. That's what happens to me. How do you wear the fur? Are you having oh, it? How big are you? Are you just wearing it what? over? Like, 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 a like the whole I'm thing. I'm wearing it. So I am now the squirrel. So you, it puts the lotion on the skin, or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> no. it, it's like face off, but with animals. Oh, okay. Absolutely. So I now <laughs> infiltrate. Face. I'm like face. <laughs> I now infiltrate the uh, squirrel hideout. Oh, okay. Before you is a hideout of squirrels. Uh, who is making the approach on the hideout? How are you approaching this hideout? Well, I look like a squirrel, so I'm just confidently walking oh. in through the So he's trying so you're to you're a raccoon to... with a squirrel suit. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> now he has one. So now he's trying to trick so them, it's, basically. It's like a deception? <laughs> yeah, I would say you, you 
you're trying to trick them at that point. Yeah. So you have any cunning? And, yeah, sure. Go so, for it. All right. I'm a, I'm a cunning individual. Plus Are you? One. Plus one? Yeah. Okay. Rangers are plus one. All right. That's another good roll. Uh, ten. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you just infiltrate. They they think you're their brethren. They actually think you were the squirrel that got killed. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like Larry. Larry's, Larry's back. Larry. Larry <laughs> missed you. Yeah. You seem a little different. All right. <laughs> I uh, I go to Larry's house. Yes. And I pretend to uh, live with my wife and children for a week just to <laughs> just like assuming the whole identity. Oh yeah. Like like, like I'm going deep into cover. <laughs> you must have done some thorough research what on are this you as doing? well. Yeah, smashing the door. <sighs> All right. Well, so that's how we're starting this adventure. That's how we're starting. <laughs> uh, great. Okay. There we Welcome go. back, everyone. Welcome back. Um, Henry just tips twenty five dollars. Cheers to the night's last squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear any of that when you were over there? I tried not to hear. Any of that. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, I don't know what was going on there, but we'll. Uh, I don't know. The world may never uh, know. Are we, are we better or not? Uh, well, yeah. well from my perspective, it was never us, so I just think it was every single else person else's problem. Anyways. Okay. I agree. Um, anyways. Cass says we're in good shape now. Yeah, okay, great. So anyway, That's because we've been working out, Cass. <laughs> Cass has been. Derek's your mic, mic is, is not working. working. Mm. I was wondering if you could hear me when I was jamming. Where, where's your, where are you in the mixer? Uh, behind that uh, thing. Mm. So would you like me to move it? I can't see you. <laughs> behind that uh, thing. Mm. So would you like me to move it? I can hear you. You're fine. Behind that uh, thing. Mm. So would you like me to move it? Or does it sound muffly? I don't know. My sounds good. So would you like me to move it? Or does it sound muffly? I don't know. Mine sounds good. Oh, sorry. Infinite, Infinite feedback. <laughs> <laughs> So, let me set up a little taller. You, let me set up a little taller. So, uh, Henry says Derek is coming through fine. Maybe it's just Ben. I don't know. Why would Ben only not be able to hear Derek? All right, nobody else talk except for Bob. Well, welcome, everyone, to the Knights of Last Call. So glad you're able to join us this evening for this fabulous, wonderful adventure of squirrels. <laughs> and raccoons wearing squirrels. Oh, welcome to this technical uh, problem solving. You got everyone else muted, right? No. It looks like everyone's muted. Everyone is muted now, except for Bob. Okay, you see, and everyone hear me just fine? Are you as excited as I am to learn the rules of Root? I recently have. Uh, this is only to say, this is only my mic. This is only your mic? Yeah, everyone else is muted. Yeah. Uh, I've only played the uh, Root board game and Oath so far, so I'm pretty excited to do this stuff uh, for the RPG. Obviously, both games, board games, were very, very well done, and uh, we had some pretty crazy games at Origins. Uh, between them and very tight games. I think they're well balanced and very very exciting So can we make the RPG just as exciting as the board game? You'll find out soon Everyone says Bob sounds good. I just don't think Ben likes listening to you Derek <laughs> That I buy <laughs> I even sound a little taller. Yeah, I got it Anyways, um, All right, so anyways, um I didn't change anything. Uh, <laughs> that was just, I mean, obviously it sounded better because we muted the other mics. Um, you know, again, I'm not an audio engineer, so uh, we are going to continue to try to make these work. And if they can't work... This this stream will just make Ben fly in. He'll be like well, in in about an hour and a half to fix this. He'll be like, I can't um, handle it anymore. <laughs> and then if, if it doesn't work out, we'll just go back to the uh, to the booms. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. So If we have to. Um, all right. Anyways, so tonight we are here to talk about Root, and I'm going to try to explain uh, a little bit about this game and how it works, so that we can uh, sort of uh, figure out how we're going to we're going to play it. It's mostly for people at home who may not be as familiar for with Powered by the Apocalypse or with um, um, uh, the Root game in general. So we're going to give you an overview, so that when we get into session zero, right, you can have a better appreciation for what is going on. But um. um uh, <laughs> There's going to be a lot of root puns, I can guarantee uh, That's right. Wolfel Stein <laughs> yeah. says, uh, $10, looks like you've gotten to the root of the issue. Um, in any case, uh, uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, appreciate it. But, um, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, it's going to be echoey, Ben. Uh, yeah, it's just going to be echoey. And is that just because of the shotgun mic's nature? Yeah, it's a shotgun mic's nature. It's, Should there's, we like spread them out? We're, no, no. It's just we're, in a, we're just in a room and, you know. You're gonna have mm -hmm. a slight echo to it. So I, only, I talk, it bounces off of something, yeah. comes so back. The only way that's gonna happen is if we had the dynamic mics sitting on us, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so 
Um, first things first, though, I want to pick up, or uh, pick up, I want to introduce, or I should say reintroduce, um, Nick. Uh, Nick, of course, you may remember uh, it uh, came with us from Rise of the Rune Lords. You yep. came in uh, a couple episodes in, um, and Nick played Escanor, the champion, um, and then, of course, Nick died very... Along with everybody else in the party. Ah, <laughs> oh, spoilers. <laughs> uh, very valiantly and heroically. Um, but, uh, you know, when we were putting this together, we said, you know, hey, we want to do this live, we want to do this in person, um, so we're going to get some of the some of the group back together. You know, Quest for the Frozen Flame was great, but, you know, Tim lives on the other side of town, Kaz lives on the other side of the country, so, um, you know, make, doing it online made sense, but we knew we were going to be doing this here and uh, in person, in the studio, so we wanted to, uh, to bring back Nick and and uh, we're really excited to have you. Well, glad to be back. It's uh, interesting to see the, the change in the studio since I've been here last. <laughs> uh, it's a little different than before, uh, but it's a nice thing to be back and uh, good to be back in the, you know, with everybody online as well. So happy to be back. Awesome. Uh, and then, of course, our new, new member is uh, our good friend, uh, John, but goes by the name of Dirt um, after Joe Dirt, right? It was still there. It was a janitor. Right. And you were a janitor, janitor for many years. years. Yes. But uh, Dirt is the the local uh, uh, operator Hello, slash, uh, slash uh, 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 guru of our local gaming shop. So yep. our favorite local gaming shop is Great Lakes Great Lakes Game Emporium, Menor, Ohio. Find us online at Great Lakes Games. Is it still Great Lakes Games? With so that would be... There's mine is Mr. Cards on TCG. Uh, Mr. Cards. <laughs> that doesn't even make sense. <laughs> well, they started it together with Dan. Yeah. They were all one. And then when I came along, I didn't want to be with them because I wanted to make my own money. Got it. Got it. Mm. Um, so anyway, so I was like, I understand that. Yes. I own uh, money. Thank you. Alyssa's, <laughs> Alyssa's saying hi. Have fun. So um, yeah. So so Dirt is. Uh, I've known Dirt for a long time. Um, I actually met Dirt when he was tilting off after a game of Magic and started just ripping cards out of his binder and said, you know. Who wants money for Who will give me money sale. for this? Fire sale. I bought a bunch of, like, Mox Opals. Was that and, back at Mr. Cards and Comics? Yeah, this was yeah, at Mr. Cards and Comics. that's when I first met you. Um, yeah. But then uh, through, you know, through uh, Hook and Crook, uh, Dirt now runs our local game shop. So uh, I've, we've, we've always... Gross. We've always talked about playing mm -hmm. games, um, and so when again when I was putting this together, I thought, all right, you know what? Let's get another local person. Let's get some new blood in here. So that is why we have had Dirt join us. So I'm really excited about that. And of course, Bob, me, yes, uh -huh. and of course, Mr. Smith. So um, yeah, oh, we're, we are we are we are really excited to be here. So we are going to be doing session zero in a couple of weeks, but. Tonight, I want to at least talk to you all, basically, but also to our audience at home about, like, what is Root? What's kind of the basic concept yeah, of it? Yeah, watch and learn. Yeah, watch and learn, and, like, what is going on with this um, with this game and with this system. So let's talk about Root a little bit. For starters, Root is based off of a board game that was pretty popular. Bob and I had the opportunity <sighs> to play it that just was, that was this fun. weekend at Origins. There's a lot going on, It's but it's fun. Yes, yes. It's a funny game. So Root... The board game is a, is essentially a war game, but with cat people and bird people, and it's designed to sort of. Um, it flows nice. It, there's no issues. <laughs> it's it's designed to be kind of ironic in that it's this kind of brutal game that seems all like happy and fun because the art's kind of cutesy and it's animal people, but like you know it's. These things are murderous. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's 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 murderous it, animals it, behind you know, all it's, of us. It's an oppressive regime. It's woodland. War, it's war across the woodland. It's a you know, it's a, 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 a rebel alliance that, in some cases, you know, is maybe more like a terrorist organization, right? Um, it's mercantile empires who have like you know horrible, greedy, monopoly, you know, uh, corporate monopolistic tendencies. These people all have deep stories, like right? Deep backstories, a lot of like grudges and. Uh, Passion and you know drives like right. what's happening with the Erie Dynasty? What's happening with the Marquis Dynasty? Yeah, so the way I describe it is it's like yeah, it's like Watership Down or whatever Redwall meets Game of Thrones. Yeah, that was yeah right. And actually, so, when Derek described the board game to me, he only used Game of Thrones terms <laughs> to describe each of the factions. Yes, that's true. And I was like, oh, I'm right on board. I know exactly what's going on. <laughs> um, and we'll and we'll definitely cover that in session zero when we sort of go over the. Um, 
you know, kind of the the history and the whatnot of the of the woodland and, and how we come to be. But the important thing to to understand here is that in the game of Root, the board game. There are, you know, different factions. There's the Marquis de Cat, which are this uh, almost colonizing, expansionist, greedy empire who've come from afar and landed on the shores here and taken advantage of the woodland while it's in a state of chaos and have sort of extended their claws into everything. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Airy Dynasties, which are the birds who have, for many, many generations, been the ones who have sort of ruled over the land because by divine right, it's like we can fly. It's almost like Targaryens have dragons. Well, yeah. birds are like, well, we, we can just fly. That makes us better than everybody else. They're so cool. But in the board game, <laughs> there is one piece which is just a... Uh, Dude, or you know, or a gal. It is the vagabond, a very powerful person. <laughs> yes, and the vagabond is this character in the board game um, who sort of goes around and does quests and loots ruins. The question from Ryan Dale: Who's the Game of Thrones equivalent? The uh, vagabond. Who, who's the marquee analog for the Game of Thrones? That's a great question. Well, it depends on how much you know your Game of Thrones Ooh. lore. Uh-oh. The, Going deep. The best example I could give is actually the Andals, when they originally invaded Westeros, like, several thousand years before the sh you know, show began. So, you know, you may remember that the, the people from the north are the first men, and, uh, you know, they had this sort of pact with the children of the forest, and then the Andals came with their weapons of steel and their uh, the, the seven-faced god. So they came from Essos and landed, and that kind of became the dominant religion and people of everybody south of the north. Uh, yeah, south of the north. Uh, but that would be the sort of expansion. But if I had to sort of say other than that... Um, you know they're, you know they're a bit like the Dothraki in that they're like foreigners and they're coming from afar and they're very powerful and deadly. But they they're they're actually very civilized. You know they're not um, you know a bunch of nomadic raiders. They're much more like militaristic, industrial, um, and that's kind of what they're bringing. But anyways, you have this vagabond who is this sole character who goes runs around and he. You know he plays the other factions against each other and he's trying to you know in pick and choose his battles as he tries to win. But in Root, the idea was, well, you know, they're like, well, oh, that, that's basically like a PC, right? And you're basically an adventurer. Um, what if we did a role-playing game where everybody was a vagabond? Um, and so you are a party of vagabonds. And if I'm not mistaken, the vagabonds, I played the game, but they're no joke. Right. Like these aren't just little civilian animals. <laughs> correct, correct. In fact, you know, vagabond is sort of like a catch-all term that means badass, yeah. adventurer, <laughs> um, mercenary, you know, rogue agent. You know, you're kind of a, um, you know, a major power player. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody knows your name, but it, it definitely is the case that you're a mover and a shaker. You know, a vagabond is more than a match for any you know, small handful of soldiers from either any of the factions. And then, of course, obviously a very skilled vagabond could potentially take on entire squads. Um, but even then, it's not just about their combat prowess, right? It's about their, their, their fluidity, their flexible alliances, the fact that um, they can sort of uh, you know, play both sides. And of course, most importantly, the woodland is defined by, well, the woods. And the woodland is surrounded by all of these vast forests and for most common people, it is far too dangerous to ever cross through the forest. You have to stick to the to the rivers and the lakes that you're used to. Um, and uh, TLC joke. Anyways, um, so I don't get it. The waterfalls. Waterfall oh. song. Anyways. Yep. Okay. Anyways, don't go chasing them. Don't go chasing them. Okay. So the vagabond. <laughs> so the vagabonds. The vagabonds can and will. Not only can they. Not only can they travel through the forest. Um, they can also go into the forest. Um, the forest holds many dark secrets um, because it is a sort of a realm of of. There's no real magic in this world, but there's sort of a, a, a sense of mysticism that exists inside the forest. I kind of like that. It's like low fantasy. Yes, it's very, mm -hmm. very, very low fantasy. As, as most of the things we try to do are until they're not. <laughs> until they're not. <laughs> right. Root campaign ends in space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you heard it here now. Root, root campaign ending in space. Bob um, smokes smashes. I bam. I might. Depends yeah. on what, I, what class or uh, play, playbook I go with. So, um, oh, so That's pretty good, KC. What he said. I said I should take waterfall lore, which is a throwback to our quest of the frozen yeah. frame. Yes. Come up more often. Uh, yes, it'll come up more often. Good. So, 
Root uh, was created by Magpie Games, who made games such as Avatar Legends, their most recent Another good game, game. <laughs> uh, which we had an opportunity again to play this weekend at, at Origins, which was a lot of fun. Um, I, I actually, I thought, it, I thought it ran really well. Actually, uh, it was very smooth. Yeah, um, and I and I had said in, in our last podcast that uh, that the combat was clunky, but that was like the only thing I found, and, and, and clunky is like the. Hot, the worst word I could probably use for this, and it wasn't that clunky. It just wasn't as smooth as the game was. The game was like super smooth. Right. <laughs> uh, I, I think the clunkiest part was just Derek had to explain it. Fair, fair. Because right. everything else was. Just and like, oh. if we played it more than one time, we would, yeah, we would just we'd roll fly, naturally. Fly, yeah. But Avatar just, especially if you like the system, it, you're gonna love that kind of game. And Magpie, I think, does a good job with what they're doing. So yeah, better than Five E getting the Avatar game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we didn't we didn't need another Five E game. So Magpie uh, put together this root game, and again, you know, like Avatar, I mean, they're trying to do an homage here, and you can see the board game elements have been sort of put into this game. Um, so in the board game, the Vagabond goes around and gathers pieces of equipment from all the different factions. Swords and torches and crossbows and armor and you know boots, that, they, that that's how they act in the, the game itself. And if they get attacked, um, well, they don't have like troops to lose, so their items get damaged. And so, like, so they're like, okay, so we want damage to items right. to be sort of an important part of this game, which is what kind of led them to sort of their primary resource mechanic in this game, which is harm, which we'll talk about here uh, in a little bit. But uh, yeah, so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna kind of briefly talk about Powered by the Apocalypse. I know we've talked about that on this channel before, but... Um, <laughs> uh, Richard, when he knows what's up. What do you say? Uh, Root campaign of full mortgages to raise your arm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this game does need more mortgages and health debt. I think KLLC also bought a ton of Traveler this weekend. Uh, uh, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> several, several hundred dollars worth of Traveler. I only spent about a hundred dollars of Traveler, but... Several hundred dollars worth of traveler. Oh, yeah, but, there was... but Rick, the Rick Sherman is a very big fan of of traveler, and uh, by proxy, sort of, uh, they the, um, a half our group tried it out, and they like it too. And now they've bought every damn book I can see. Well, not even close. <laughs> not not even close. close. Okay, right. half the books that I saw, you guys were either buying or were going to buy. I, I think we have most of like the non. There's just a ton books. of books, <laughs> but I don't have the robot book yet, so I should get the robot book. Oh, and there's also the vehicle book. So actually. No, maybe maybe like two thirds. You spend like a couple hours nice. building a character, and then a couple hours dealing with mortgages and housing. Oh, okay. In spaceships. Oh, look into it. You gotta, you gotta build yeah. Everything's cool though, because end every sentence with in space. <laughs> <laughs> I have severe medical debt. In space. In space. So See? Is it okay? That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right we're, getting, we're getting off topic. Sorry, magpie. Magpie. Um, again, root in space. Oh yeah, root. Um, <laughs> root in space. Yeah, root, root, yeah, root in, in space. space. <laughs> so. Um, so let's let's start first. And again, um, I know that obviously, yeah. So obviously, I know that you know Bob, you and and Smith, you guys have played Power by the Apocalypse before. I don't think Nick has. Played. Nick, have you have not. not. And you, Dirt, you've been a, you've been adjacent okay. to it. So for everybody at home who may not know much about Power by the Apocalypse system, uh, Power by the Apocalypse was originally a, a game called Apocalypse World, and the author D. Vincent Baker and his wife McGay McGuay Baker put together a framework for sort of a narrative fiction, sort of a, I hesitate to call it a storytelling system, because it's really not, uh, it doesn't really have like mechanics in it like fate points. Right. It doesn't have like these meta currencies that you might have in other games that really, really care about narrative. I always say that like fate is a much more narrative game than uh, anything made powered by the apocalypse, hmm. because powered by the apocalypse literally is like, or I'm sorry, fate is literally like you have this currency of fate points that you say, okay, I'm going to give you this to make your character act a certain way, and you're saying I'm going to spend that to, you know, get this benefit and be and so act is, a certain way. I haven't played fate, but is that sort of like rolling ten or higher in PBTA? Like you're going to get what you want? Um, because what's cool about PBTA is you don't you don't always get what you want, but you sort of do sometimes. But then there's consequences, and that's what's so pretty interesting yeah, about so, PBTA. So what PBTA, what Power by the Apocalypse approaches, and I mean I assume most people know this at this point, but the basic mechanic is you roll two six sided dice, and you total them. Excuse me, you total them together. That's why I never drink anything. Uh, oh, that's right, carbonated. Carbonated. Well, oh. um, 
Not me. So I just turned mine off. So. Um, I was like, I, I have mine on silent. But um, in uh, you roll two d six and you add them together. Now you may add a modifier to it, like a stat, like you would in a D and D game. You know, D and D situation. But the uh, interesting thing about Powered by the Apocalypse is that your role will always create some sort of effect. Yeah. Okay? So when you roll six or less, all right, when you roll six or less, the GM has the sort of moral authority to make something interesting happen. In fact, they're required to make something interesting happen. So the biggest... The biggest um, now sometimes you have... Guidelines for what that is, and sometimes it's like freeform or. Well, no, I mean, I mean, a lot of people get hung up on the idea that like, oh, there are these, there are these moves that the GM has to make. But that's, I Avatar had that. They do, but okay. those are those are only just suggestions. Guide, other guidelines. Yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. guidelines. They're just suggestions. Okay. That's what I like a little bit better over like other traditional systems like D and D. Yeah, yeah. So the the best example I can give for this is like when you, uh, I don't know, let's for say, example, well, let's uh, say, oh, go ahead. yeah, please. Well, like. In 5e, if I jump off a roof to, to, you know, attack an orc, I'm not going to not hit him. You know what I mean? I may not strike him the way I wanted to. Right. You're talking about PDTA. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. You know, right. I, if I roll a four, you're like, well, you jump off the roof, but you slip at the last minute, drop your sword, and you land in his arms. Right. So, <laughs> you know what I mean? Something like that. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the gist of the matter is, you will never have this, in, and, and you can think of many instances in other RPGs where you get this. You will never get this. Make the roll. I didn't roll high enough. Okay, nothing happens. Next, Next. turn. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right? awful. Mm-hmm. Whether that's uh, missing an attack or whether that's, like, I try to pick the lock. I try to kick open the door, right? The, you roll the dice, you didn't get high enough. In a lot of games, the response is, you didn't do it. Yeah. Nice. And, you know, what are the consequences? Well, nothing. You just didn't do what you wanted to do. You just didn't do what you wanted to do. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, so, Ryan. Um, and so, <laughs> so Powered by the Apocalypse tries to make every dice roll really exciting. Because what, I think it succeeds in that, too. Because so, what mm-hmm. it's going to do is when you roll low, then I get to do something. right? I'm empowered to suddenly make your life a lot more challenging and interesting. And you're like, and a lot of people say, well, okay, but what if, um, what if there's nothing that, what if there's nothing interesting that could happen? Like, what if you're, I don't know, buying rooms for the night at the bar? Then I shouldn't be asking you to make a dice roll. Right. If it doesn't right. matter, it's not worth the dice roll is meant to because there's a challenge. There is something we need to determine right. with a dice roll. Also, I think what's nice about PBTA is uh, not to say that I don't like I like watching everyone's dice rolls. But sometimes in D20, you can just kind of ignore what Nick's doing. You're like, oh, he's going to attack him? All right, I'm going to twiddle my thumbs. Because either he's going to hit him or not. But PBTA, like, that is so much, like, uh, right. consequences of what's going to happen. He, it, because of what he does, it might determine what we all are going to do. Correct. And, and a, lot of pe- a lot of D20, it's like, you're going to hit, then you're going to hit, then you're going to hit, then you're going to hit. <laughs> but, the, but the consequences, too, it's not just necessarily on me, right? So there's some right. cases where if, to your point, oh, I'm an attack, if I miss... Okay, nothing happens in D and D, right? That's right. It, I just don't do as much damage, or I don't have a special effect. But if I do something in this nature, I miss. Well, what are the consequences? Oh, you've fallen down. You, now I'm yeah, taking right. Hostage. Like, uh, like you know, yeah, yeah. Nick, <laughs> Nick, Nick misses, and I go. You know, the the uh, the ogre batters aside your pitiful attack, kicks you in the chest. You go sprawling into the mud, and then the ogre spins and comes over to smash. Yeah. Bob, right. right, and you're like, and suddenly Bob, I'm Bob, like, what wasn't just even, what just happened? Right, Bob wasn't even a part of that, and then um, you know, boom, suddenly he's into it. Exactly, um, that's what I like about the, it. The the plushie behind Nick is the Woodland Alliance, it's I mouse, think, mouse, it? I think, or yeah, the, the rabbit. The, the no, it's a mouse. It looks, it looks like a mouse. It looks yeah. like a mouse. Well, Derek at Origins when he went to the root booth, not only did he obviously buy the root shirt earlier, but then he decided to buy <laughs> all the plushies he could find uh, that were root related. Um, for our, for our stream, for you guys at home to be able to see these cutesy things. <laughs> <laughs> and you know how much I love cutesy things. Yes. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> well, you invited me, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. very correct. Um, <laughs> Pedro's name is Nick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gotcha. <laughs> you know, Pedro Fiscal, I think. I, I've heard that said that before. Um, so, Powered by the Apocalypse is a, an interesting system because what ends up happening is the moves that you make, and, and this is, again, a common mistake that people make. The moves that you make 
should only happen if and when the game cares about those moves happening. The long and the short of it is um, there, there should be a lot less dice rolls in a Power by the Apocalypse game. I think one of the biggest mistakes Easy that people it. make is they make a lot of dice rolls. Now, don't get me wrong. If things are happening at a quick pace and you're taking a lot of actions, which have a lot of crazy and un, you know, unforeseen outcomes, um, you might be making a lot of dice rolls. But you will never see a situation where it's going to be like, okay, um, you make a you make a check, you make a check, you make a check, you make a check, and then we'll you know like that will never happen. Um, so, as a result of that, um, the game uh, can flow a lot quicker because it really just focuses on us talking back and forth. It's funny because it's like it flows quicker. But then also less dice rolls because the game itself starts to push in a direction. Right. And the dice, even though it's awesome, can sometimes slow D20 down. <laughs> you know, and then PBT it doesn't do that. It actually yeah. sort of like just kind of pushes the narrative, I think, in a really good I'm slowly becoming more and more a fan of PBTA. And I actually think it can develop your skills to do better in D20 because sometimes a lot of D20 you get a little mechanical, yeah. and PBTA is a lot more narrative. Tells a better story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, it all comes down to the fact that at the end of the day, what some people don't like, which is fair, is that when you roll a six minus as a player, because again, in D&D, &D, a strength check is supposed to represent how strong am I plus this randomness of luck versus the inherent difficulty of this door. If the door is thicker and heavier and made of steel, Right, the number would be higher right. that, that you have to hit, which means that the chances that you will break through that door are lower. Mm -hmm. In Power by the Apocalypse, there is no such thing as a DC. Yeah. Okay? So the check that you're making isn't representing like some sort of f f statistical frequency of how likely am I? Yeah, the DC is six minus, yeah, the, seven through nine, 10 or higher. Yes, the DC is six minus, seven to nine, or 10 or higher. Yep. And so as a result of that, now getting back to the example, kicking in the steel door, mm -hmm. and I say, okay, you know, you're gonna try to, you know, break through this steel door. Use okay. my might. All right, roll with your might. Okay, you're trying to break through Ooh, the, you're trying, to, you're trying to break through the wooden door. Roll with your might. Eight. Right? It doesn't matter how difficult the door is, right? And people have a hard time with that. But it also kind of, you know, to that point... Yes, it's not, yeah, I'm sorry. Dan Dan is absolutely right. He said, PPTA, your stats represent degrees of narrative agency. And that's actually the best way to describe it. Uh, that's actually really good. Because, <laughs> because the, the, what the check actually represents in Power by the Apocalypse is we have reached, again, we're going to go over these... Uh, we're going to go over these basic moves here in a few seconds, uh, a few minutes. Um, but when we go over these basic moves, that is that is the game's way of saying, I care about these things happening. When these things happen, we have to roll. Yep. yep. Like, for example, on the upper right-hand corner, wreck something. <laughs> okay? So the game is saying, look, we care about that. When that happens, if the conditions are met, you should be rolling dice. Yes. But the check does not represent some sort of, um, you know, uh, so we just got simulation. And, and then Ryan's oh. long text uh, skipped it over. But uh, dice rolls in narrative games like Fate and PPT are less about succeeding or failing and more about how cool you look doing it. So I'm actually going to disagree with you there. Uh, uh, a little bit there, John. Refund, $10. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. But thank you, John. Because what I'm going to say is in Powered by the Apocalypse, it's more about the game has told us we care about these things. Uh, the game cares about when someone tries to read a tense situation, when they try to wreck something or trick an NPC. And so the game is saying when we get to those moments, we have to. We don't get a choice. Yeah. We must roll the dice because now we are basically reaching a, a crossroads. We are reaching a point where something dramatic and yeah. interesting. The and, dice need to intervene. And the dice need to come in because our story would otherwise be too boring. Right, the dice add in this extra level of of uh, uncertainty. Yep. Anything else that is not on that list, when a player asks if they can do that, the GM just decides whether they can do it or not. The, the in other words, it's not trying to simulate anything. It's just trying to um, determine what does it actually care about in terms of the narrative. I don't know. I don't know if you got this. I stepped out. Apologies for that. By the way. That's right. Um, 
you know, when we're trying to figure out what kind of game this is, it sounds dumb, but I'll, I'll explain what I mean. Like this is this is a role playing game, and what I mean is, the role play is deeply tied into the game. And one of the things I think is very interesting about PBTA games is this isn't you know this isn't like your was it rule one rule zero sort of scenario. Oh, you have to have fun. Right? Mm-hmm. Well, well, the GM's always right. GM's always right. Like because in this, the GM doesn't just get to decide. Oh, we're gonna ignore that rule. When a move is triggered, the move is triggered. Yep. Okay, and that's gonna happen. And if the GM doesn't follow out that, like he's cheating. Yeah, he's like, not, you're he's no not playing, playing the game. Playing games. That's right. That's a good point. And it, that is different because D twenty is like ah, do whatever you want. You know, it's D and D. It's your campaign. No, this is root. And if you're playing Root, you're going to follow the rules. If not, well, you're not playing Root anymore. I like when Derek, we'll, we'll start talking, and Derek will be like, are you trying? Are you saying that you might be reading a tense situation? <laughs> and I'm like, that's exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> like, yeah. like, he'll bring the rules right in, and you can really get a good understanding. So, you, obviously, you guys watching at home, I think you'll understand it pretty soon uh, when we start to actually play and get into our sessions, like when we're actually prompting moves. Because we can't really just say it. Well, yes, I mean, the, the, I mean, again, the... You know, you shouldn't probably play any role-playing game like this, but God help us. Uh, I should wear my map attack shirt. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. But like the fact of the matter is, like in uh, in a game like Powered by the Apocalypse, you are not you are not allowed. It's it's kind of like a silly rule because like whatever. But it's like you are not allowed to say like like if if, if I walk into the town, uh, you guys walk into the tavern, and you know it's kind of like a a record sc- you know scratch moment, and you guys just say. Um, you guys just helped. Howdy. Yeah. You guys. You guys just helped. Say, uh, or last night you got into a fight with a bunch of Airy Dynasty soldiers, okay. and you walk into a tavern and it's just full of like off-duty Airy Dynasty soldiers, <laughs> right? And like, well, and you don't know if they know who you are or whatever if they've heard what it is. And so Nick, let's say I'm going to pick on you, Nick, because you're Go right here. Um, let's say Nick goes, um, you know, uh, Derek, uh, I'm going to read a tense situation. No, that you're not allowed to do, right? You're not like you're not allowed to just say I'm going to read a tense situation. Now you got to be more descriptive. You, you might say, "Well, I really want to read the ten- I really want to read a tense situation." So, um, you know, I'm going to calmly walk to the bar. I'm going to order a I'm going to order a drink and make sure not to use any uh, Airy Dynasty gold that we may have picked up <laughs> off of those both people last night. Um, I'm going to be really smooth, and as I kind of quietly take my drink, I'm going to sit back on the bar like I've been here a million times, and I'm going to look around and see what people are saying. I'm like, okay, so you're reading a tense situation. And that's what makes this game so cool, because it's basically to do, do. Right, to do it, do it. I mean, that's literally what it says. But also, vice versa. If we had that same situation, and Nick came into the bar and saw the situation and Nick goes up to the bar and he goes I'm going to start talking to the bartender I'm going to say, you know kind of maybe ask like oh anything new around here recently wink wink nudge nudge <laughs> I'm going to take a look at the tables and uh, I'm going to kind of get a feel for like what's going on and I and I would go oh so you're reading a tense situation you don't get to choose right. like what Nick has described that's what he's done is reading right. a tense situation mm-hmm. and now the game says Okay, when now we have to roll, right? Because this is something that the game cares about, and it's not there. That is not an option where Nick, if Nick does that, he's reading a tense situation, yep. and if Nick wants to read a tense situation, he has to do it. Or he could just try to draw attention and just scream free shots for everyone and pay with their gold. <laughs> right now, now here's an example. There is no free shots. Uh, pay, you know, pay with everyone. You say you're gold. trusting your fate. <laughs> 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 that's totally. <laughs> no, you know, so that's like okay. That's, that's a great example. I'm gonna bring this up here. Um, if you look at the bottom right, the bottom of your screen, you'll see one of the moves is trust fate. When you trust fate to get you through trouble, <laughs> roll with luck. So let's say that the let's say that the the you know the one of the guards is like you. You look really familiar. <laughs> say you weren't down by the docks last night, and then I go Nick. What do you do? And he goes, free shots! <laughs> I might go, oh, you're totally trusting fate. Yeah. And you can generally tell if you're doing it right in a PBTA game because everyone else at the table will go, yeah, yeah okay, yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's, that's, totally, that's totally right. But also, too, um, you know, it's fine to have a little bit of a conversation, right? Like, I go, oh, so you're trying to do this? You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 
I didn't know that I like I didn't know. But okay, let me let me back, let me take that back yeah. a little bit. Okay. I want to okay. let me restate that a little bit. I didn't mean to. I didn't want to trigger that move. It, it, it's not a gotcha game. It's a conversation. Th thank you, Ben, for, yes. the, for the ten dollar tip. The table, new table and set look fantastic. Carry on. Yes, and we are okay. uh, again uh, still my my lights aren't up yet, so I'm still working on my my setup and everything like that. We're gonna get some more uh, but plush, they, apparently but they, some more plushies in here. Correct, but they also do get the uh, the overview shot, which they haven't really seen because we got the logo down there. Oh right, right, right. And, right. and, and before we even sort of the, the the shot was a little more interesting that we had to avoid the globe light, the big sort of sun thing. that used to yeah. come down here. But now that's we get a little more shot on the table. Bought, we bought more lights, so everything is good. <laughs> Your money lights. equals lights. <laughs> we right. got at least some of our seven hundred dollars in lights we have to buy. Yeah, potentially. I don't know. I'm, I'm really happy with these. I, I might, I might feel like these might actually be oh, enough. The little spotlight. The little things. spotlight. Yeah, things. It gives a nice, it gives a nice little splash. How many <laughs> lights can Derek own? How many lights? Lit, how many man. lights can a man walk down? We're gonna get lit. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah. So obviously, uh, the one thing I guess we still need to figure out is maybe some of the. Uh, uh, technical yeah, um, sound quality. So we can uh, you put some muffles up. Or yeah. So sound, sound quality, I think, is going to be the biggest. Yeah. Is going to be the biggest issue for us, and we're just going to continue to yep. try to work through that. Well, that's um, not a bad idea. But again, we can always go back to our dedicated <laughs> lights of patrons. Um, <laughs> all right, Ben. Take care. Uh, Thanks, man. Uh, Dan, you know, uh, Kaz, I don't know where uh, the reflections are coming from. I'm not like smart. I was wondering if like, even like just me talking. TV. Yes, I mean anything flat is going to reverberate the yeah. sound. So I mean, I mean, like, but we're never going to be able to make this place completely dead. But we can try. I mean, yeah. I've got sound blankets. We could probably. We will try to make this completely dead. Yes. <laughs> All right. With with your help. Shows can't. Uh, good luck. Good luck on your. Uh, good luck in your session, Ben. I hope your TPKs go uh, really well. This is his last VSD session. This is so. the last versus D. Yeah. So um, that's going to be a white. So <laughs> it's going to be a white. Um, <laughs> ben says we'll talk offline about the audio. <laughs> I'm having PTSD of the Wheel of Pain already. Fair enough, Ben. We will talk. We will talk. Um, so let's get into uh, what, how, kind of how Root works. Yes. So the first thing that I want to sort of bring attention to is the basic moves. Okay. All right. I'm going to bring these up on screen for everybody. Sorry if you can't see everybody, but we're going to talk about um, we're going to talk about one move, and then we'll sort of kind of come back here. Um, Yes, uh, the, the horizon is a little crooked rule of cool in the overview shot because the camera is off to the side. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we're, we'll eventually figure it out, but just, right now it's off to the just side. Just tilt and stay with us. Eventually it'll be coming hanging straight down from the middle. So, mm -hmm. um, so our first thing that we want to look at is um, the idea of attempting a roguish feat. This mm -hmm. is kind of unique to this game. All right, Your character has, uh, there is, the game cares about, it's kind of like D&D skills, Probably one of the more crunchier elements. Um, the game has a list of about nine roguish feats, okay? And these are basically skills, right? You either have this ability or you don't have this ability. And again, I provided this for you, Bob. So you oh, perfect. Know. Well, I just want to see the spoilers for who I oh. might just play. You never know. <laughs> uh, save versus with a $30 super chat huh. says uh, adding some gearboxes to the lights. Of last call. Oh, that's oh, so good. That's, good. Oh, that's, that's a good cool. pun. That's good. That, is that is a good pun. That is a good one. That is a very good one. Thank you. Thank you, Save Versus. Um, you know, listen, I will always take another light. Okay? <laughs> I will always will always take another light. Um, the lights, at this point, lights of, I've done more lights than I have with nights. So that's light, true. lights that's of true. last call is, is uh, first call, really, more like it. Anyways, um, so in this game, your character will either have this roguish feat or they won't. Um, now, as you advance through the game and you earn experience points and you level up or whatever, you can gain more of these roguish feats. But this is the game kind of telling you, look, your character is, even if they're a warrior or even if they're a, you know, um, a sort of a politician, they're a little bit of a, of a rogue, you know, and they're a little bit of a scoundrel. And so this game says, when we are doing one of these things, uh, like acrobatics, is it or only these nine? Karen? Only these nine. Okay. Okay. Um, if you're sneaking, if you're pickpocketing, if you're doing any of these things, then what you are trying to do is you're trying to attempt a roguish feat. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you're going to roll with finesse. And if you succeed, if you if you get seven or higher, you achieve your goal. But if it's a seven to nine, um, you mark exhaustion, which is a, kind of one of the resources, which we're going to talk about here in just a few mm -hmm. minutes. Or you have a risk from your feet. So what is a risk from your feet? Well, there's some risks on the right side of the of the, the, 
the uh, page here. But basically, this is your classic PBTA success with a complication, mm -hmm. right? So if you are, and again, the key here is, if you get a seven or higher, you succeeded. Okay, I can't take that away from you. It's like, no, you're really quiet, but they see and hear you anyways. Okay, no, we've we've clearly missed. You land the ship, but it explodes. Okay. <laughs> On the other hand, if your goal is to say sneak in and then discover that like the way that you were going to get back out is now compromised, mm -hmm. you can't go that way anymore. Or um, you know maybe you you sneak in and nobody sees you, but maybe you forgot to close a door. And now, like, some of the guards are kind of like Metal Gear Solid, you know, like, oh, what was that noise, <laughs> right? Um, Hide in the box. <laughs> right, you know, yeah, bust out the box. Um, it's that yellow alert phase or whatever, yep. Metal Gear Solid. Um, that is where something like a stealth or sneak might have a complication. Um, and again, again, there's, you know, things for every, all, all, you know, there's risks for everything that we do. But the cool part about this game, and again, I like agency, and this is what makes this game different than other PBTA games. Arguably something that I, one of the reasons I'm drawn to it and attracted to it. Your character on um, on a character sheet. Playbook. I, uh, well, any old playbook, but um, if, uh, here, I'll just pass you down here. We two get homework, kids. Come on, winner. <laughs> so, okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you sir. Um, Ah, boo. So your character on the back of, uh, uh, or on your character sheet, you have five stats, mm -hmm. right? Charm, cunning, finesse, luck, and might, and those do different things. But the thing that I really want to draw attention to that, that really kind of defines this game as being different from other PPTA games is the harm tracks, which are in their own little section and they're in their own box. There are three harm tracks, injury, exhaustion, and depletion. Mm -hmm. Depletion sort of represents um, what do you have, in, what, what's it got in its pockets, is, mm -hmm. right? Like what kind of um, spare change, a uh, little doodad, a small doohickey. Rather, than, pig, rather than track every single piece of equipment, you just use depletion. So if you wanted to reach into your pocket to pull out a few silver coins to pay for the night's stay at the inn, I'll, I might say, mark a depletion. Exhaustion, as it says, kind of represents your character's endurance, um, your... Um, your, uh, your wind, your ability to sort of kind of keep going and persevering. Do you get to push on exhaustion? Or is push that just on exhaustion? What do you like mean? Uh, in Avatar, you get to push and pull on certain things. Uh, a lot of things say like uh, clear your exhaustion track or this causes exhaustion. Uh, do you as the GM get to? Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay, absolutely. absolutely. Can you push fact, and pull on that? If you uh, if your bar is fully exhausted, you can no longer voluntarily spend exhaustion. <laughs> oh. But Derek can force you to take exhaustion, in which case you fall unconscious. Lovely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so as an example to that, Bob, let's say that your character was trying to break down a door, right? Okay. Like um. You know, uh, the guards have been triggered. Uh, you've been caught in the, you know, yep. in the princess's chamber. Um, you know, they're yeah. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> Mark and exhaustion. Wow. That's not what it looks like. Uh, no, no. no. Mark, Mark and exhaustion for that one. <laughs> um, and you're trying to, and you're trying to break down the door. Um, yeah, he is. If you got a six minus, um, again, that's a, that, a six minus, and this is one of the reasons I hate this language, and I wish they had never used it. And they call six minus a miss. Right. Mm -hmm. And I hate it. In fact, you still the, actually succeed. Because one, actually one of the things that I really liked about Thirsty Sword Lesbians was that they got rid of that. They got rid of that. <laughs> it's a Powered oh, by the Apocalypse yeah. game. It's power, that At one, first I had the same reaction as you, but now I'm just growing used to it. It's a very popular <laughs> game. Uh, it, won, it, it won a gold any last yeah, year. It's the best good. game. I'm really yeah. glad by the way I asked you more details about it because my wife was like, oh, tell me about this game. And so I was like, whoa, it's actually like kind of like <laughs> Zorro, but with lesbians. Yes. That is, that is actually accurate. <laughs> so what, one of the things I love that they got, they got rid of that term, and instead they called a, um, a 10 plus an upbeat a six minus, a downbeat, okay. and a seven to nine, a mixed beat. Just a like, beat. In, like in a story. Like, okay. you know, you might think I of like mean, a, a downbeat, you know, like a downbeat. Like, oh, sh Han just got frozen in carbonite. That's a downbeat, right? Like, yay, we blew up the Death Star. That's an upbeat. Spoilers. Which side you're on. Um, <laughs> spoilers. <laughs> so, yeah, spoilers. So anyways, you could be knocking down that door, and I might say, 
you roll six minus, that doesn't mean you fail. Yeah. That means the ball is in my court. Yep. And I could tell you, Bob, you can you can kick this door down, but you you have to take two exhaustion to Oof. do it. And you can make that decision, and you get to sort of decide whether or not you want to do it or not. But now, now if you wouldn't. I assume you would not try to push me into unconsciousness at that point with like if you were like well, no, no. Don't. and then well, if you, you take you two cases to the sides. I gave you a choice. But I could, depending on how hard the situation is. A very strong door. If you, yeah. Well no no, if you put yourself in a situation, and again, this is where some people have a little bit of problems with the game. And one of the reasons that I like Powered by the Apocalypse is because I get to be a director mm -hmm. and an editor. Okay. Meaning I, Derek, running this game can get a feel from all of you, is this a really critical, cool moment, or is this not a really cool, critical, cool moment? If it's like an awesome moment where your character would be like, yeah, if I just, you know, hold- Stakes are on the line. Stakes are on the line, and my character was, passes out, but it's like, to but if it's just like me trying to escape, it's like, that doesn't really make a lot of sense. Okay. I, as a GM, have complete control over that. I can decide how hard or how soft my move is. Right. Up to and including, you're dead. Up to and including, you know, hey, you're dead. The choice um, is yours. The <laughs> choice is yours. Kill. But what I like about this game, what I like about this game, that kind of, it's, it's kind of like something like from uh, one of my favorite mechanics, which is from Blades in the Dark, which is mm -hmm. Resistance, is that if you look at um, uh, Roguish Feet, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, yep. Attempt to Roguish Feet, on a seven to nine, you do it, and you risk, you uh, or one of the risks of your feet comes to bear. You know, mm -hmm. something problematic. But as a PC, you can say, no, I'm going to mark the exhaustion instead, right. and everything is cool, right? Yeah. Meaning you have that ability to kind of come in and say, nah, like, this isn't this isn't my time. This is important to my character is, to do succeed yeah. here. Oh, I don't want that complication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that was uh, the fatigue. A Avatar yeah. had that. Avatar, exactly. That's right. Avatar had the fatigue. Right. That was a nice mechanic. Right. right. Yeah. Which is so I mean they made here. Avatar after this game. Yep. So typically in like a Power by the Apocalypse game, if you roll seven, eight, or nine, it's just like that's it. You don't have any control at that point, right? right? The GM is going to the GM is going to tell you. Does everyone have four exhaustion, or does it depend on the playbook? Everyone starts with four. Okay. There are some playbooks that can get more boxes. Oh, interesting. That, that's pretty cool. I was yeah. like, I wonder if you could be more durable or yeah, more. Actually, hard. I think it's the advancement. Yes, you can add one box to any harm track, max six each. Wow, that's right. Pretty so sweet. when you level yeah. up, you can. Ink Take more boxes. Level up. Level up. Mm -hmm. Get stronger. Let's do it. <laughs> um, so, roguish feats um, are kind of like the, the, sort of some of the bread, bread and butter of this game. Uh -huh. And the key of this thing, which I like about this, is if you're not. So you might, people might say, okay, well, that's a really short list, right? That's only like nine things. Yeah. My character might only have one or two of those on my sheet. Yeah. So, what, I can't do any of those things? No. This game is awesome. Because what this game does is it has two moves. One is when you're, in, in Avatar, it was use your skills and abilities. Yeah, or, yeah. Uh, rely on your rely training. on your skills and training. Yeah. In this game, it's use a roguish feat. You can do anything in this game, even one of those roguish feats that you don't have. All right, so I don't have to pick a lock. I can try to pick a lock. Right. You're just trusting fate. So I am no longer attempting a roguish feat. Right. So I attempt a roguish feat if I have the skill. You got it. Uh, the the feat, and yep. if not, I am trusting fate to hopefully I pick this lock. Basically, well. exactly. do you have fate. training to do yeah. this thing, or are you just kind of winging it and you're like, yeah, hey, let's press okay. my luck and see if so I can do it. Are those the two big ones? Those are going to be the two main ones. Got it. Most of the time, in terms of like interacting. Okay. And one of the things, and again, this is a subtle takeaway, but I think it's important for you guys to kind of think about this, which is, remember, there's no DCs. In this game, which means that uh, now, granted, when you are using a roguish feat, you're going to roll with your finesse score, okay? And when you roll with luck, you're going to roll with when you trust luck, you're going to roll with your luck score. Gasp! Mm -hmm. But <laughs> let's say they're both plus one. Okay. So when you when you do that, you roll two d six, you add one. The cool thing about it is, if you're not trained in that, or you are trained in that, your chances of succeeding are the, are the same. same. Interesting. So even if you're completely untrained in something, if your luck is zero or one, you might have just as good, if not a better chance. What changes is the consequences. What changes, and this is very much like a Blades oh, in the Dark style thing. Yes. So this is this is the effect of, uh, this is basically position from Blades in the Dark, Trusting right? Trusting fate's Con a little bit more desperate. Well, yes, trusting fate is like doing an action at the desperate, 
and using your roguish skill is like doing it at the control. Yeah. Think about it. Oh, there's a consequence, but you can just pay an exhaustion and you're fine. Yeah. You did it and nothing bad happened because you're a smooth, trained professional. Oh, you're trusting fate? Well, guess what? Even if you succeed, there's probably going to be some sort of consequence. Right. Basically, it's just a tear up like if I want. Right, it's basically like saying like you don't need to be trained in everything in order to do anything. In fact, you can do anything you want. The difference is just whether you're going to be using attempting a roguish feat or trusting fate. Now, that being said, from a rules perspective, if your character has bad finesse and bad luck, <laughs> you're screwed. Yeah. Well, no, because you know. What are you doing? Does that playbook exist? Yeah, uh, I would think so. I mean, like, well, there's probably an option of it. I mean, the, Ronin, like the Ronin has zero finesse, and negative one luck. Yeah. All right. So the Ronin is just host. Yeah. So he's very strong. So that is that is an example. Like I'm playing the Ronin. That is an example of a class where maybe you should like take a point and you know try to get some of those stats. Well, up. they might have moves that let them like. Yes. They absolutely like might. Games. Yeah, and, and and might do that. So. Those are sort of the yin yang. With of, this trust fate, though, it says that you, on a ten plus, though, yep. fortune favors the bold. Yep. Your panache also earns you a fleeting opportunity. What is fleeting right. opportunity? Well, it's a fleeting opportunity. So this like a, like anything else, opportunity points or stuff like that, and like uh, no, yeah, so, something like might actually happen good in your yes, favor. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, now keep in mind, it does say, Bob. I didn't know if that was defined. It says, <laughs> on a hit, you scrape or barrel through, the GM will tell you what it costs you. On a 10 plus, you also earn an opportunity. So, you, so it still might you, cost me. You still might cost me. Gotcha. You, okay. But, you know, there's like a, you know, that's like where it's. <laughs> that run is just rough. Run yeah. Rough. <laughs> um, now, that being said, there are other skills in the game and there are other moves in the game. Now, remember, there's only eight of these, nine of these basic moves. What about anything else in the game? Well, if it's not covered by a move, then it's just part of our conversation. Right. Mm -hmm. If you try to do something, and we're talking back and forth, and we get to a point where you're asking me if I can do something, if the rules of the game haven't dictated that one of these basic moves have triggered, then the answer is I'll just, and I won't go, um, I don't know, just roll, make a might check. That is not something I can do. I'm not allowed to do that. Right. Oh, so I did that squirrel check earlier? Yes. Illegal. <laughs> well, unless, unless in your game well, it was that like... that might have been tricky well, no, yourself. No. Because I, I, I was attempting a roguish feat, and then I had to wear its skin. Were you attempting a roguish feat? Well, it was... Uh, no, because there isn't a... Well, maybe counterfeit. It's a, no, it's a counterfeit, yeah. Oh, counterfeit or hide, you could have been trying to so hide while it would have going been in into the it. second scenario, but the, just the murdering of the, uh, of the friendly squirrel. That's, that was just murder. That was, okay. a, that was, a, that was a blind side. Um, oh, shot! Actually, that was that was straight up target someone. Uh -huh. Which is a feat of yours? No, it's just a. a there hasn't gotten this yet. Oh yeah. gosh, it's a it's a combat move. Oh, we haven't gotten to combat yet. Yeah. All right. But the so, nice thing about these yeah. two is, you know, to your point, the kind of pressing your luck type of thing, the trusting fate. All of these are very realistic that anybody could do, right? This isn't like your D&D, sure. yeah, exactly. I have to do a spell, but I'm not trained in this art. <laughs> yeah. I don't have this super no. feat thing. Like, that's a great example. These that's are, a good point. No, these are good. very relatable that kind of like, okay, you're a vagabond, right? You have to fend for yourself. You're a wandering person. You're going to have some, all right, I need to be able to hide. I need to be able to try to pick a lock. Like These are very realistic things that somebody can do, even if they don't have training. Right. No, that's a great point. Um, I mean, getting it, maybe not everybody could do these things, but as a vagabond, you can. Yes. And so either you're going to be attempting a roguish feat or you're going to be trusting fate. But that is a really excellent point. Um, so the other the other uh, move that I want to really call out here, um, the next one I should say, is the second move, which is figure someone out. This is the recall knowledge of mm. this game. But here's the cool <laughs> thing. There's two of them. There's figure someone out, and then there's read a tense situation. And this tells you a lot about the game. Figuring someone out uses charm, tense, Reading a tense situation uses cunning. Mm. Figuring someone out is social. Reading a tense situation is environmental. Mm -hmm. Re figuring someone out is about people, or animal people, I guess. Um, reading, you know, a tense animals are people. reading a tense situation is about you know reading the room. It's about understanding what's going on, the threats, the environment around you. And that means that you know some PBTA games have one of these, but not the other. Mm -hmm. uh, like Monster Hearts basically has figure someone out but it does not have read a tense situation. Dungeon World has read a tense situation, mm -hmm. but it does not have figure someone out. This now, game has both. Also notice, figure something out doesn't say they must answer truthfully, is that implied? Um, well, while interacting with them, spend your hold one one to ask the, their player a question. Is your character telling the truth? 
Right. So that could be the question but you asked. No, I'm asking. Oh, okay. But yeah, you yeah. ask the player, does the player have to tell you the truth? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Or is this like, is it really like recall knowledge? If I roll a six, you're like, I just no. lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just lied to you. Um, no, yeah, so with, uh, with figure someone out, um, yeah, you're going to be rolling charm, you're going to hold three. And the idea here, by the way, even this, the framework of this move, right, it's like, okay, you roll it, and hold is this idea of like, you don't have to be this, you know, you don't have to be this specific, but it would be like, you might have a little pool of, yes, of, of beads or of, gem, of gemstones <laughs> or glass beads. When you figure someone out and it says hold three or hold one, what you basically get to do is take and have this little pool of knowledge that you can call upon. But you don't spend it right now. In fact, as you continue to interact with them, as we're role playing, as we're having that conversation, and I say something, you know, like I'm like, I'm like, of course. The Marquis State will will completely refund any problems that you have. Are you lying? Right, and Aaron can just spend a whole. <laughs> he has, he says, "Hey, is he telling the truth?" And I have to answer honestly, okay? Or I could say something like, "We are more than we are very excited to be sharing this clearing with our lizard, uh, with the cult of the See, lizard it's brothers." Like, so it's like, um, what is your character really feeling? Right, right? like <laughs> you screw can, you. <laughs> it's like it gives you the player an ability to like push pause on the movie and then lean over to the person who's seen it like 25,000 times and go, you're, what is going on right now? You're metagaming, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it, you're, so you're, it lets you get like almost like an auto success in a sense? Well, no, because no, you to make the check still. On a 10 plus, it's hold like, three. Yes. Hold one. Oh, the, the number of questions? Recall knowledge that works. Yes, Got the it. preemptive recall knowledge that works. Yes. Um, and so in this, in this case, with like figuring someone out, once you have that hold, again, you can spend it as you continue um, the conversation. Now, compare that with read a 10 situation, which says, on a seven to nine, ask one question, on a 10 plus, ask three questions. Hmm. Read a 10 situation has to happen right then and there. Mm -hmm. So if you get a 10 or higher, you would say, okay, uh, you know, what's my best way out of here? Okay, like, you know, the, the eerie guards have just broken in you know, um, you know, through the front door with arrest warrants, and they are coming in to search, and you're like, okay. Yeah, there's a lot more pressure in this. Yes, it's, uh, well, this because move. here's the thing. You're like, you can't, this move doesn't trigger unless it's a tense right. situation. If it's not tense. If it's you're not like tense. around the way. I'm like, Dirk, uh, what's going on in this play? Dirk just tells us. I'm just going to tell you. Yeah. I'm not going to be like, make a perception check. Right. No, because it's not a tense situation. And in fact, if I'm ever, if I ever do something that seems like doesn't is appropriate. Call me on my bullshit because I'm cheating, right? Yep. So it's cheating, like cheating. you know, you, you you have a responsibility to make sure that I'm following the rules as well. Absolutely. Okay. Um, then we get to um, two sort of social interactions: trick an NPC, persuade an NPC. Okay. Okay. And again, um, charm and cunning are what we use for these. This is basically your diplomacy checks. This is how you're going to interact with an NPC. And again, because they want to keep it the story feral. Okay. The idea here is. And again, you can't trigger this move, persuade an NPC, unless you are persuading an NPC with mm -hmm. promises or threats. That means we have to be having a conversation. That means that you have to come out me and try to persuade me with a promise or threat. You have to, to do it, you have to do it, right? And so then we'll say, okay, okay, okay. Rather than just the GM going, I am gonna decide that what you said in character really works. This game says, that's pretty boring. <laughs> we're going to roll dice instead, right. right? And we're going to see how they react. I was going to ask if you could do it on a, on a PC, but then there's plead with a PC, yes. which is like, sorry, I was like, yes. oh, I could trick a PC? No, no, you no, no. plead with a PC. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is persuade an uh, NPC, yeah, yeah. and it is trick an NPC. Yeah, yeah. Specifically um, call that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Specifically call that yes. out. Yes. So again, those are two things that... Um, are sort of interesting because this basically shows you that this game is one where if we're interacting and you're trying to persuade an NPC with promises or threats and we're doing that through role playing, there's going to be a die roll involved. I, I the GM, am not going to be able to go, 
Well, gee, Nick, that that's very convincing. That's very compelling. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna. You know what? I, it really works for me. You're a good talker. It really works. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. a really good talker. I'm very working on influence. <laughs> and you know, these days. Yeah. And, um, you know, and it would work really. <laughs> and it would and it would work really really well for my my story if this guy just went along with your plan. So I'm just, <laughs> yeah. gonna, I'm just gonna say yes. This is my backstory. I'm not. Story. Allowed, I'm not allowed to say story. I'm not allowed to uh, to have my story be the thing. Yep. And this game is saying no, no, no. This is one of the things where. The GM doesn't even get to decide. The dice do. So that's persuading and like it. So I want to share a cool rules interaction with this move. Uh, so pers uh, persuaded NPC is the charm. Yes. Right, as Eric has described. And uh, you roll with your charm stats. Yes. You roll with your charm stat. And the Ranger is a playbook that I've been kind of interested in. Yeah. Uh, starts with a, a negative one charm. But there is a move they can take called threatening the visage, where you pers when you persuade NPC with open threats or naked steel, roll with might oh, so it's instead of shock. Right. So, so it's basically intimidating. It's definitely intimidating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and it's actually pull right in their face and say, you're going to give me what I want. Right. <laughs> and, and, and more importantly, right, it's going to allow you to use something that you're good at. Right. To, now, to be fair, plus one might. now, to be fair, right, it's not just the same thing. Right. It's not like in Pathfinder 2, I might say, make a diplomacy check. Right. But, or no, like, this is very clear. You have to be threatening. Right, you have to be threatening or oh, naked yeah. or naked steel. Yeah. You 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 can't be like we're talking. Right. Oh, I'm gonna persuade and, with my might. And here's the thing, right? Uh, uh, unlike you know Pathfinder spelling this out, you know what happens in the fiction is real. So this is a real threat. So yeah, maybe this lets me do what I want to get what I want right now. But you know this NPC is gonna remember I threatened to kill them. Right. Like, You're gonna have that notoriety. Yeah. 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 Notoriety. 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 Yes. You sound, like, you sound like me over there. Yeah. <laughs> but no, that's a great example where yes, mechanically they might accomplish the same thing, but the the fictional impact of that's going to be much you know much greater. Right. Um, and Sean, that is a great point. Um, Sean, you said um, figure someone out does work with another player, and it, that is absolutely correct. Yes, Thank right. you, Richie, for the description. Oh, is that our boy Rich? Richie, yep. Oh shit. Oh, is it a magic player? Nah, uh, well, uh, you know, would, would, would be gamer. Yeah. <laughs> we call him would be gamer. Gamer adjacent. Gamer adjacent. Gamer adjacent. All right. <laughs> oh, so figure something out does work with a PC. That's what yes, okay. I couldn't know. All right. So the last three. Bob, are you lying? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Well, you know what? That's actually something that actually comes up quite a bit where you're like, you know, know, like an I? avatar or in these games, where it'll be like, where it'll be like, be like, you know what? What could make you give up your obsessive quest for it? And you're like, oh shit, I don't know. I we, we pause. We need to like talk about this. Like yeah. I haven't really thought about that, right? And so you end up having these kind of conversations. Um, I don't. I'll be honest with you, 100. percent I don't know why wreck something is a basic move. Because um, I want to wreck it. Uh, of all the, th of all <laughs> yeah, the, I agree with that. Of all the things that are in this game, I don't know why this one is a move. Um, this one's a little strange. I, I, I might even do some some like digging into like the the Reddit to like see like why did they feel like because the Magpie people are pretty good about like talking about like why they included something right. why they didn't include something. And like I, this doesn't include any specific mechanics in their system. This is like super just general. Yeah, it's just super generic. Um, I, I don't know if it's because they wanted like a physical move, you know, like when you're interacting physically with the environment, but again, I don't know. Like, I mean, it makes sense, like your, your your example four is I want to I want to try to break down this door. Right. What's the implications? It gives you But that it's strange that they to... specifically call out this one, but mm. I, 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 I They just want you breaking I digress. I mean, maybe they just want you breaking shit. Alright, the last two are... Animals are, be wild, yo. The last two are really interesting. So these are the PC moves. Okay. okay. Help or interfere. Interfere. Okay. Let's be very clear about this. This is uh, not a competitive game, but you may not always want your fellow PC uh, to win. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is winning? Uh, succeed. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> when you help or interfere with another vagabond, mark exhaustion to add plus one or minus two to their roll after they have finished rolling. Note, you Maybe can. The penalty is worse. Then you can mark exhaustion again to select one of the following. You can either conceal your help <laughs> or you can conceal your interference. Gosh, that's so bad because then in the fiction, or in the, in the fiction, you have to, you have to, right. you have to, I mean, I just F'd you over and right. you're like, who screwed me over? You're like, Bob, you're my best friend still. <laughs> yeah, I trust you completely, Bob. Buddy. <laughs> um, 
It's definitely an interesting dynamic. You know, it's a trying very to, interesting dynamic. Yeah. You're yeah. trying to you're trying to accomplish your goal, and if somebody's about to accomplish it before you, you're like, uh, nope. I pulled the. So I don't know how you tripped. You know, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, I'm and, and I think that's, that's something that I think we should talk about here a little bit. Um, you are vagabonds. Okay, we're not. A you're group. Not, you're not a. You're a. We're you're a band. We're, we're, we're band. Yeah. yeah, we're we're together. Gang. We're we're together, but we're not like. You know, buddies. We're not necessarily buddies, yeah. right? Um, you might like you we, might become buddies. Well, and you, everyone can have individual reputation. Yeah. Right. So I might hate the cats, and you might be pro cat. Well, you're pro bird. Right, right? now. And so I might be pro cat who eats birds because mm -hmm. birds suck, and. <laughs> We might get into a confrontation there where you're like, hey, let's screw over the cats. And I'm like, no, screw you, buddy. Right. Is that just cat. like, as long as our immediate goals align, we're, 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 well, it, kumbaya, it's but like, it's like, yeah. it's like, it's like, think of it this way you're like really highly skilled independent contractors, right? Yeah, and, works. And, you, and you're working together because it suits your purposes, but like, you're not going to let somebody, you know, um, uh, you still want to accomplish your You still want to accomplish yeah, your goals. Yeah, yeah. else, right? um, and, you know, and Isaiah makes a great point, too, which is you have these competing drives, which yeah, are on yeah. your character sheet. Your your drive might be, you know, I must defend my lord, you know? And so there's an opportunity where someone's trying to screw over your lord, and you go, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to harm them. I'm going to interfere with that role because I want to make them to be disrupted. Um, so the other one is plead with the uh, uh, PC. Uh, when you plead with a PC to go with you, they clear one exhaustion if they agree to what you proposed. You may use this move only once per session. So this is your, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we play this fucking game? Can we just go? <laughs> Wait, so if I disagree with him, he may plead with me so that I can clear exhaustion? Yes. So wouldn't you just like want to disagree with him so you can clear more exhaustion? That's why you can do it once per session. That's, okay. that's right. why you gamest power gaming fuck. Those damn <laughs> days. Guys like you ruin this move. Just right. the, you know, I scam yeah, the there was, there was probably a time where this just said, oh, you can do this as many times as you want. Right. And, and then someone then like Bob, Bob and Northern Regis players will show up. up. Then a bunch of Northern Regis players show up. <laughs> Bob is in there with two bows. And <laughs> Um, and before you know it, they have to limit it. Um, but yes, I mean, this is, uh, you know, clearing one exhaustion isn't like the most uh, broken thing in the world, but it could be very, you know, useful. And there's a little bit of a bribe for you, you know, when, like, hey, let's go along with my plan. Come yeah. on, please. And then you say, okay, fine, that's great. Um, so those are the sort of the basic moves. Um, and, and by the way, I think, uh, I think Emperor Epic said, uh, um, uh, he said that uh, it's possible that the, they needed wreck something because they wanted at least one basic move that used might. Yeah, which is and that that's that makes probably sense. Oh, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. sense. Is the stats. Which yes. Right. So there were there was no Each, other yeah. right. There's you have uh, one with finesse, uh, one with luck, charm. two with cunning, two with charm. Yep. Yeah. So you know they, they needed just, they needed something with might. Um, well, it's interesting too because that used to be a thing, right? Like you had a basic move for all six stats. We don't even have six stats anymore. Correct. This game uses five. Mm. Oh, well, Apocalypse World used four. Oh, really? Dungeon World used oh, six because okay, so it's D and D. But yeah. they they still had the basic move per attribute, didn't they? Uh, no, every move had something different. Um, and then you had Defy Danger, which was kind of like. But yeah, you might have had Hack and Slash with Strength, uh, Volley, right range Volley well, was Dungeon World. But they Defend was Con, Spout Lore was, was in. Same thing. Re Discern Realities was Wisdom. Parlay was charisma. Yeah, there was one basic move per yeah. stat. Yeah. And then you had Defy Danger, yeah. which was in all six all, stats, which yeah. kind of like saves. Yeah, no, that's probably true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Emperor Epic says, uh, oh no, power gaming the RPG by creating interesting character conflict. How terrible. <laughs> well, and we've said this before. Um, I encourage people to metagame the game. Sure. It's yeah. designed so that when you actually engage in it and play with it, it'll create these interesting opportunities. All right. Real quickly, I don't want to uh -oh. go super deep into this. Weapon moves. But now we're talking. You know, Root is a game where we're going to get into fighting. What? I mean, so Avatar didn't really try to push into fighting. It was a lot more political. No, I would actually argue that that is not true. Because that's actually, Avatar actually takes it the next step. Because Avatar yeah, yeah, yeah. has that whole, it has a conflict system, the, the combat exchange system. Yeah. So you're thinking you and Avatar, you get into more combat than this? Um, than Root? I would think. That in Avatar, yeah, yes, oh, I, because okay. it's very rare that you're going to have a you're going to have a episode of Avatar where there's not some sort of con conflict. So you, you know? think in Root Week might go a whole session without fighting? It could absolutely okay. happen. I mean, it depends on your relationship. To uh, right, I just want to know the flavor. Yeah. Just based on reading the books, because obviously we, I haven't played it yet. 
I actually think Root's a little bit closer to L five R or combat when we tap yeah. it. It's kinda of brutal. Yeah, yeah, that could be that could it sounds pretty brutal. Because like Avatar, yeah. like like it takes a lot to first of all it takes a lot to get taken out. Mm -hmm. And it takes like a very specific campaign setting to get killed. Yes. Right? Fair, fair. You're not fair. gonna die in Avatar. Like this game it this is the game Nickelodeon is just, cartoon. It's a little more on like the basic side of things where it's like, hey, you fill up your injury track and you take another injury, you're dead. Just like and it's not uh GM Paragov. It goes, you're dead. And it's not a, I'm gonna take a quick potion and heal myself. It's like, oh, you have to do a month of rest, or, or you yeah. have to have a, 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 a doctor. You got no to potions do of elixir in this joint? Yeah, no, no potions <laughs> no of potion. elixir yet. Um, so with weapon moves, and, um, and with weapon moves, um, th there's two main weapon moves, and then the rest are special. And I'm not even gonna really worry about special, except to say the following. Um, I'm sorry, there's three basic weapon moves. Yes. Um, the way that the weapon moves work is, Everyone can engage in melee, grapple an enemy, or target someone, which I don't have uh, visible here on screen. But basically, you have engage in melee, which is you have a close combat weapon, and they have a close combat weapon, and you're engaging an enemy in melee. Now, this is a classic example that's been used in Powered by the Apocalypse and Dungeon World a million times. Look at that, look at that thing. It says, when you engage an enemy at melee, in melee, at close or intimate range, roll. So Nick jumps out of the shadows and stabs someone in the back. That is not engaging in melee. That is not engaging in melee. Does that sound like you're engaging in some sort of <laughs> That is how we're blindside. I was trying to say, that is how we're blindside. Roguish feet. Now, if I'm trained, it's a roguish yeah. feet. If I'm not trained, I'm trusting So <laughs> the, the key here is engaging in melee means that you're, you know, basically sword <laughs> fighting. You know, you're you're clashing. It's You're on even par. Right. If you go attack a bear, that's not engaging in melee. That's suicide. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> that, is not, that is not engaging in melee. That, oh, bear! You know. <laughs> I stab it! Thief. That's like saying, like, I go wrestle the semi truck, you know. That's you know, <laughs> just unless you're playing Final Fantasy, I'm a suplex right. that thing. Um, <laughs> so, fighting bears in space, fighting bears in space. Um, <laughs> and note that engaging in melee is a little, a little dangerous, okay? Because on a seven or higher, you um, it's a hit, you yeah. trade harm, mm -hmm. they do damage to yeah. you, you do damage to them. It's only if you get a ten or higher, okay. Um, that you can, um, uh, or sorry, you always trade harm, but on a 10 or higher or a 7, you can get three different things. So you can suffer less harm. You can inflict more damage. But if you get 7 to 9, you can only pick one. Um, you could choose to suffer little harm, but if they're doing two harm to you, then you're going to take one point of damage regardless. Uh, with and shifting you know. your range one step. Yeah. Is that like uh, making them have to like move towards you? Or yeah. Something? Well, remember, there's no. There's actual ranges in this. Oh, okay. That's so right. like, like there's far, close, and and Malia, I believe. It, uh, intimate. Intimate. Yeah. Intimate. yeah. So that's yeah. like how we always talk about like the circle yeah. of ranges. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So like for example, if you're engaging in melee, someone in melee, mm -hmm. and you get, you know, you only get a seven or nine, so you choose to trade harm. So you two are fighting. And you're, you know, you're fighting in the the the, 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 the fortress of the Marquita Cat, right? And then you go, uh, Derek, I'm going to shift my range one step. So you're fighting with a guy. You're on the you're on the yeah, steps, right? He hits you. You hit him. And then you look to the left. You know, there's the rope on the wall. You know, you grab it. You slice it. It you know pulls oh, you up. You know, you shoot up to another balcony. You know, to to kind of increase the range so that you can run away and escape, right? There's no like, because here's the thing. This is not Avatar. These are not, there's no conflict system here. Mm -hmm. Right. This it's is still just, just these are still just moves. They just happen to use your weapon. All right? Okay. Targeting someone is kind of the same thing. It's with, like, a bow. And then um, grappling is, is sort of like a quick, it's almost like a dual system. All right? Basically, like, if you get in close with somebody. Jeez, there's a whole lot going on here. Um, yeah. Basically, if you get in close with somebody, you both just start doing damage to each other until somebody chickens out. All right. <laughs> or, yeah. Which or, I think it's funny too because of that. It's like okay, you guys are simultaneously going to do the same thing. Yep. It's just you're. I mean, it's not like you can really block. You're literally grappling, grabbing right. them, and just yep. swinging away as much as you yes. can. You keep making choices until someone disengages, falls unconscious, or dies. So basically, once you're into a grapple, you know that's like he's got a knife, I've got a knife. We're you know up close. You know we're we're fighting, we're struggling. You know we're grappling with each other. That's not 
sword fighting anymore. Yeah, 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 right? Yeah. That's that's this kind of close, intimate thing. And what, and what we do is, like, we Grounded basically now. stop, and we kind of just go, all right, what are you doing? You choose one, I choose one. We reveal. Jeez. Okay, go again. Okay, reveal. Go again. Okay, reveal. And then finally, someone has to back out, but then the other person still gets to do their final bit of damage. So in that last round where you back out, the other person gets one last hit. If you both back out when you flip, then you're safe. Then you're both fine. You're hoping that they, they pull the same thing. And I think there's moves that even make it, like, that like if someone disengages with you, they take extra damage or something like that. So, okay. um, the rest of the weapon moves are kind of your special moves. Mm -hmm. Again, the game has a little bit of element of crunch. When you have your gear, your gear will tell you whether or not you can use a weapon move. Oh, got it. But your character also has to have that weapon move. So, for example, if your character has the um, disarm. Ability mm -hmm. and the the weapon that you're using has the disarm ability. Then the disarm, move. <laughs> the disarm move is something that you can use and trigger. Okay. If one of those things is true but the other is not, you do not. So in other words, you only need to know the weapon moves for the ones that you have on your weapon and you have on your character sheet. And you cannot do a trust fate in that nature. You have it has to be a. No, let, let me be clear about something here. You could still in the fiction. You know, so there's a there's a special move here called storm a group, right? Mm -hmm. When you storm a group of foes in melee, this is you know w one v many, you know, <laughs> you versus the whole squad. Does that mean you can't do? No, in the fiction, of course, your character could run in and start attacking a bunch of people in melee, uh, like 20 people. Okay, so that. But that you don't have storm a group. That's also not even engaging in melee. Right. That's probably trusting fate. Yeah. You got it. Right, because. You're not. You're not. You don't have a weapon. You're not trained to fight like that. It's definitely not engaging in melee. Engaging in melee is, you know, tit for tat. We're fighting like this and that. And now maybe I argue. Maybe you are sweet enough. Maybe we agree that in the fiction, your character could hold their own. You may not have. You may not have your two-handed sword on you, so you can't use the storm of group move. But your character is a bad enough, ass enough warrior. I'm going to rule that you can't engage in melee with ten or fifteen people. But if your character isn't really like that, if your character's not in a situation like that, or if maybe your character's exhausted, or maybe your character's emotionally distraught, I'll say, you're in no position to engage in melee with them right now. If you want to get in there and mix it up with them, it's just as much you... It's <laughs> Good luck. It's, yeah, it's good luck. It's trust fate, <laughs> right? It also, also really comes down to, like, what is it that you're trying to do? And, and um, you know, one of the things that you'll see here is on your character sheet, you notice that you have these three tracks, injury, exhaustion, and depletion. Well, NPCs have a fourth track, which is morale. So if that morale track fills up, the enemies run away, you know, or, or surrender, or, you know, do something, um, you know, c commensurate with their, you know, morale being broken. So sometimes you may not be trying to actually kill them. You may be trying to scare intimidate them, intimidate them <laughs> scare them, or do something like that to that man. Um, so any questions about weapon moves? No, I think it's pretty straightforward. All right. Um, now, we talked about this a little bit. There's some travel moves when you decide to go through the forest. It's more procedural than anything. In fact, I would say the travel moves in this game are more kind of like a, they're more kind of like an oracle. It's more of like, hey, you're making a travel, you're making a trip through the, the, the woods. Does something interesting happen? The, the, the reason this travel move exists, and I don't, again, I don't have a thing here for people at home, but basically, when you roll, when you move through the forest, you have to decide how you want to travel. Your speed. The reason why they make a move for it is because traveling through the forest is never supposed to be something you can be ever 100% sure about. Right? There's always a chance that something is going to happen in the woods. Now, being vagabonds, you're better equipped to handle it than most. But the, the, the traveling through the forest is never going to be um, a sure thing. And that's why they make a move there, so that you can sort of deal with that. Um, okay. Character sheets, when you make a character. Let's just talk about what's on a character sheet. Yes. All right. Now, when we make the characters for session zero, mm -hmm. Um, we're obviously going to sort of not only be going through these and making these uh, characters, but I'm also going to bring my backstory cards. Got it. Ooh, okay. Nice. And we're going to get intimate. Um, well, I don't know about intimate. <laughs> I uh, engage in. The that was a really poor choice of words. Um, your characters will have run into each other. And worked with one another, okay. and or maybe run a foul like 
maybe uh, you know you stole something that you were hired to protect. Right, and it's actually and, one of my connections. You ruined and, my job. You know, yeah, like they they blew up your spot. Okay. You know, like like yours. You're like, yeah, well, I was assigned bodyguard <laughs> duty. Damn shame that the duke got assassinated. <laughs> oh, sorry, that was you know? me. But again, remember, <laughs> your character isn't on anybody's side. It's just business. Right. Well, right. That's just <laughs> business. That's, right. that, that, that's what it, it is. One of the relations. Yeah. <laughs> right. And business. that's the thing. It's like, you know, they're like, look, it wasn't professional. Yeah. You know, it wasn't personal. It was just business. Yeah, it wasn't right. personal. Um, and so, you know, there's an element there that makes that kind of it fun yeah. and interesting. And so, you know, as we go through that, that's kind of kind of shape how we make these characters. But a um, couple of important things. Some of this stuff is all just for helping you uh, discuss and, and um, not discuss, role play your character and sort of push your character into a certain direction. The background and the why you're a vagabond, this is all going to help you decide how to act in certain instances. Drives, however, are very important, okay, as our nature. Even though they look like they're role playing things, um, they are pretty important. So we're going to start with nature. Each playbook has two. And this is what allows you to essentially get a full reset. This is like your unmasking. Yeah, it's it's like an it's like so the relieving op- stress. I'm like yes, I know what this but is. But it's like the, but it's like but it, whereas in Legend of the Five, that's a good point, Bob. But whereas in Legend of the Five Rings, it's seen as like something to be shamed of. Oh yeah, yeah fair. Right, because your character is supposed to be this like stoic person who doesn't have any of these emotions. If your character can fulfill their nature then it's a reward for you to completely clear your exhaustion track. Okay, now, sweet. That's cool. Does this mean that, again, there, you know, to quote Torchbearer, you know, don't, uh, don't reach, right? Has you, to make sense. Your characters have four exhaustion, and you're like, you know, <laughs> I've always felt like you and I were brothers, you know? Uh, you know. <laughs> but at the same time, that's okay. If you're, it makes you, sense in this in Your the, exhaustion's the full. That probably means there was just a really intense scene. There was a lot of drama, a lot of tension. You keep that tension super high for three, four hours, it gets old. Yeah. So you have this really tense scene. Meta game wise, you're like, I'm fucking out of hit points. <laughs> I need to heal up. Guess I better have a cut scene. Yeah. Right. Guess I. I guess I better need a scene. And so the game is kind of rewarding you mm-hmm. for going and having a. A nice role-playing moment, okay, right? And it's going to try to push you into that. And each character is going to be a little bit different. Yeah, it's like mine don't seem like cutscenes. They seem yes. the arbiters like are in combat. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Punisher, defender. What yes. Yeah. Okay. It's like, <laughs> I'm just saying. It, it, I was saying specifically but it's, for this it's one. It's unique to each person. It's right. unique to each person. But but again, that's also where there's sort of that kind of push and pull yes. between everybody involved, right? Like where you don't necessarily know what uh, someone else might want to. Do one thing because they want to fulfill their nature. But where you're really going to get into the weeds with people, okay, and I'm not suggesting that you, like, align drives, is with your character's drives, is you have to choose two of these. And by the way, at the end of a session, Mm -hmm. you are allowed to change these. Oh, it's like a... For the next session. It's like your spell book. You prepare your... You prepare for the session? Absolutely not. What are you talking about? <laughs> Shut down. Absolutely not. <laughs> so I don't get, you said I get to change these. There's a narrative reason that you can uh, change Ah, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you can't just change the change. Yeah, it's all about I'm justice. No but now I'm be You want a little justice today. <laughs> um. Um, first, the first Bob shutdown. <laughs> negative <laughs> session, negative one. One counter. of many. <laughs> yeah, get, the, get the counter going. <laughs> um, Try to run in a sword, get shut down. Shut I get. Down yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go. It's not one piece, Bob. Yes. We need um, a shutdown meter. So, yeah. So with the drives, um, this is how your character is going to gain advances. Okay. 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 Advances is. Getting a new power, getting a new stat, getting a new skills, getting this new rogue This isn't feet. like uh, Avatar we had like four boxes. There's no XP. Advance. Okay. If you do your drive, you advance. You advance. You can only get each drive once each session. Oh, okay. But if you somehow manage to fulfill both drives, two, two you would get two advancements. Okay. That means nice. you would get two new level ups. You would get a bunch of new roguish feats. You could add new boxes. You could get stat bonuses, etc., etc., etc. Sweet. So fulfilling a drive is a big deal. It's basically an auto level up, and there's no other form of experience. 
So this is the only way that your character can level up. Okay, so, so choosing these drives is, is very important. Yes. They do not change. Uh, no, again, they do. Uh, they can. For your next session. So if, if, if you're saying, so you have what, the Arbiter there? Yeah. So you have Justice, Principles, Loyalty, and Protection. If you chose Justice and Principles, yeah. and then you're like, wow, that did not work for the next for this session, I, I couldn't play it How is that different from right. a spell book? Because Nick isn't right either. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, that sounds like a spell book. <laughs> is that when you complete them? It's shut down. Yeah. Yeah. Nick shut down. Um, <laughs> Nick shut down. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, shut down. Now Derek has to look up the rules. I want to play his fucking game. I want to. I want to specifically read it. Okay. So, okay. When the session ends, one at a time, each player may choose one element of their playbook to update or change. They do not have to choose anything if they do not want to. They may choose one of the following options: one, replace one drive with a new drive from any playbook, not even your own. Oh, that's totally. Cool. Oh, my oh my god, god. That's, that's very cool. intense. <laughs> replace. A nature with a new nature from any playbook. Nice. Not just wow. the two that you have here. Replace a connection with both type and subject with a new connection with, from, again, from any playbook. This move allows you to say at the end of the session, I have changed. And here's okay. how. That seems very powerful. It lets you pick a new drive for your character and it thereby indicate that they will be pursuing a new course of action. So if your character started off as being a punisher mm -hmm. and after the effect the of, after that session, um, you know, or maybe maybe your drive was justice. Yeah. Maybe you you deliver justice and you say, I'm done with that drive. I'm gonna change it now to something new. Uh, I'm going to change it to principles, or I'm going to change it to you know, pacifism because I'm like, you know, I, I I'm walking away from that. I mean, that in a sense is a very <clears throat> drastic character arc can be changing. You right. Know I mean? Like that's, so this, that's not something small. Now, to be clear, again, like anything, to do it, do it. Right. You know, if your character, you could just want to change your drive because you want to change your drive, but then it is on you to make sure that that makes yes. sense, okay. right? That like that your character has evolved, but. You know, part of your part of your hey, Janka, thank you. Just supporting the stream. We'll catch the bot at work later. Have fun getting y'all's inner furry. <laughs> inner furry. On. It's not an inner anymore. <laughs> it's outer. It's outer furry. Spence's gonna come not just with a, uh, a, a the raccoon plushie, but a full I raccoon go suit. Full raccoon. You're gonna be a Chuck E. Cheese <laughs> character. Do. Please do. <laughs> Please do not. <laughs> it's really hot in this suit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. More lights are gonna bake him. Then he's gonna be drunk as shit in a raccoon suit. It's gonna. <laughs> this sounds amazing. Oh, it's it sounds like. Gold. It sounds like fist All right, new tip gold. Do you want me to dress up as a raccoon and get drunk? Fill it up. You know what to do. I might even donate to that one. <laughs> ah, the classic. Um, how many donations to get Derek in a, a Tanuki fursuit? I actually know what that is, right? That's right. from uh, Super, Mario. Super Mario Brothers 3. Or yeah. Three. Yeah. yeah, the is raccoon suit. That's probably the last yeah. game you played. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I played Super Mario World. Okay. And I played the one on the GameCube, Sunshine. Oh, okay. Okay. But anyways, um, so point is, um, with your character, <laughs> that uh, these play. drives are very important to you. I'll buy it. <laughs> you should not. You should not expect. <laughs> okay. You should not expect that you are going to fulfill your drive um, every uh, session, right? But are you, you trying to? You should be trying to. Okay. That, that, okay. That's what drives your Which character. Yeah. Ambitions your drive. Please. You know. Level that, up. That's what drives your character. Um, and so that might be a situation where, like, if you have ambition and you advance when you increase your reputation with a faction. But somebody else is doing something that is going to drastically burn your reputation with that faction. You might interfere with them because you're like, hey, "Look, I need, I need to keep this, huh. I need to keep this safe." And and you know, to, to, this I, mean, is where you I, might I don't want to fear with. I'm not yeah, saying, yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that you're being a dick, but you're kind of like, "Look, dude, I gotta play my character like yeah. this. This is how this I." This guy would up. not be okay with that, or I need to. Right, mess and you can this point up. to your character sheet, right, and you can say, "Hey, like, you know." It's not me that's doing this, right? Like, if I don't do this... I'm I, not an asshole. I'm just playing my character. That's right. right. Well, but in this case, you legitimately... You already got a $15 tip. Ryan, thank you, Ryan Dale. Drunk Raccoon Cosplay Fund. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to trash ban his whole set. <laughs> Why do we do this? Why do I do this? All right. I'm excited. <laughs> now you're excited. Okay. I'm waiting for the dirt to come in. Um, all right. So, 
So yeah, so drives and the wine cloth. Okay. Um, so drives in nature are really important. It is unlikely, um, and I guess what I'm trying to say is, uh, it will be very sad if you know everyone just goes like. I mean, there might be a there might be an instance where everybody kind of uh, their drives all align. Justice. But like, if everybody's just like, what are your two? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make those my two. What are your two? Okay, well, I'll just have the same drives. Uh, that way we'll just level with him, right? I mean, I literally might be the scoundrel, which is like the antithesis to everyone else. Right. <laughs> I'll like so, stir the pot, so. Yeah, yeah. Right. No, no. Well, you should be paying the scoundrel then. <laughs> okay, so this is this is just all, this this is, again, this is important because mechanically, this the drives are the only way that you can level up. Mm-hmm. All right? So, on the back of your sheet, on the back of a character sheet, um, you can see your character's starting stats. You get to see what roguish feats they start with, what weapon skills they start with, and then you get moves, and the moves are going to allow you to interact and do different things with the mechanics of the game that other people will not have access to. Now, again, if like Nick was saying, mm -hmm. if you can do something in the fiction, right, then you can do it, right. But you may <laughs> not get the exact benefit that this thing offers. The fun okay. continues. T uh, tipping Take for the Frost Jack. Frost Jack says tipping for the raccoon suit. <laughs> okay, listen. <laughs> why why are we doing this? We get the raccoon suit. I'll donate the garbage can. <laughs> Problem is, is I'm a large person. <laughs> <laughs> So I need to find a raccoon suit that I can fit. No, like, a raccoon suit. Who has to fit? That doesn't even have to be, like, a raccoon suit is going to cost, like, hundreds of dollars. Please do not. Uh, and when I money anyway, just buy more lights? Unless <laughs> your wife's okay with it, too. Uh, I mean... She's, you know. Yeah, look, look Priest is giving flexible. He's shopping for, <laughs> shopping for a raccoon suit on stream. Excellent. I'm literally looking for raccoon suits right now. <laughs> anyway, All moves. Right. Anyways, you get three of these. You can also get more when you level up, um, when you take advancements. In fact, when you take advancements, you can also take them from other books, not just your own. When you advance. When you advance, okay, which you yeah. get when you fulfill your drive. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. So these ones are just more aligned to your playbook, but more could be uh, for that. Correct. Uh, as Prince. That could be just you. Smith. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as Prince. Oh, my God. This is someone from, uh, from Origins. This is from this the assistant game. principal. This has got to be either Sean or Dan or, it, you know, it's probably George. Could be George. <laughs> could be Alyssa. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me or Smith, and it could be Steven. Oh, I was not here for the yes. fiasco game. I was drunk so the, and the chat, out. the chat, um, the name on the chat room was the assistant principal. They couldn't fit it all in, so it was oh, Ask Prince. Prince. <laughs> <laughs> it was excellent. Which was funny for multiple reasons. It was <laughs> multiple. All right, yeah, well, fiasco uh, can get a little wild. Plus one to Drunk Raccoon. Um, <laughs> it's a movement, Eric. You can't stop it now. Uh, Sean. Sean. Yeah, yeah, Sean. Sean. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely Sean. Oh, <laughs> uh, which was that's who that was. Yeah. Sean was uh, that was right. Sean was the assistant principal. I thought he was Mike Turbato. He was or whatever. He was, he was okay. also the assistant principal selling drugs, beating up kids. <laughs> so it's so wild. Mike had a scene where he was selling weed to students and then proceeded to beat up another student. <laughs> which and is then in, which is you. He had a relationship with a girl in high school. It was yeah. it was a weird. In the very next scene. He shows up as the assistant principal. Yes, but he was also tu being tutored by Smith. I mean, it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Fiasco's you know kind of so crazy. Rude. <laughs> yeah, so root. Um, so yeah. So basically, moves are a kind of a cool way for your character to interact with the game. Um, they uh, allow you to sort of uh, put your own unique spin on it and kind of give you sort of a unique way to sort of interact with the game. So, like for example, the adventurer who is sort of like a, a traveling. Diplomatic vagabond mm -hmm. um, can has subduing strikes. If they are trying to subdue an enemy quickly and non-lethally, when they engage in melee, they can use cunning instead of might. Oh, that's actually pretty good. And yeah. the adventurer has a bad might, so this allows them to be a functional character in a combat. But they can't do it when they're hacking people apart. Makes they sense. can only do it when they're kind of you know clocking them in the head and and put them down you know non-lethally. Gotcha. Um, and you cannot choose to inflict serious harm if you do so. So you know it's kind of an interesting way to sort of, you know. Yeah, and you could and you get one plus one a stat at the start, right? So you could go plus two in cunning. Correct. Yeah. In fact. Yeah. You could go plus two. You could take plus one in, in cunning from your stat, which would give you two cunning. Yeah. And then as one of your three moves, you could take well read, 
which gives you a oh, plus so a max one of and, three. Right? Wow. And so then your character yeah. would be the, the most the most cunning, cunning, cunning. Yeah. Uh, you know, which uh, makes you quite uh, non lethally wow. deadly. Right. <laughs> right. That's where you're like, you have a lot of money, like way more than like Warhammer nerds. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Did you, well, like a, a, a realistic. Raccoon suit starts at five thousand dollars. Holy! You know somebody shit. in chat. I don't know who it was. Somebody in chat was like, he's like, he's like that. He's like that. What he's like? He's like you need a thousand dollars just Someone to get a deposit. That. Just now, to get a deposit started. The, the, the head alone is about six hundred dollars. Okay. Yeah, you don't need that. So I might go for the. the oh, pajamas. don't. <laughs> you just gotta go, go to the con down at the Great Wolf Lodge. Buy used one. You'll be buy used. <laughs> that okay? Of all I the things to never one. buy used. <laughs> okay. For uh, someone else, like for, sperm in here. So, <laughs> this is Dan Smith. <laughs> we're not, we're not at Origins anymore. Smith. We're live. This is a fiasco. Uh, yeah. So, what about we got demonetized this time? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, I don't even know where my stuff is. You use one. There's still two thousand dollars. What's that? What? Uh, someone said they use one. Use one. There's still two thousand dollars. It is 8.41. Okay, cool, perfect. All right, so, um, yeah, so the, those are sort of like the basic rules of Root. Okay. Um, and what we're going to be doing when we make our characters is we're going to be doing three things. Cool. First, we are going to collaboratively world build. We are going to build the wood. I was actually going to wonder what, how we're going to play. Yeah, so okay. we're going to start off by sort of describing how this environment has sort of been shaped over the last, you know, 50 to 100 years to get us to where we are today. And in that role, you won't even have a character yet. You're you're just a neutral observer who wants to make an interesting world. Microscope okay. it is. Uh, actually, Root like has... Microscope. Root wow, has, that's going to be my favorite part of this whole game. Root has, its, <laughs> Root has its own rules for that. Um, and this will allow us to create the clearings, uh, which are like sort of like the places in the forest where towns and villages have been sprung up, and we'll get to see like which factions are in control of them and oh. which you know which factions are in play. Then, after we face paint, Brian said, "What's that? <laughs> what does it say, Dirt? Raccoon face paint? We're gonna pivot off the raccoon. Okay, let's I, pivot to raccoon face paint. I still feel like we'll be demonetized for that somehow. Yeah. These, are, these are like kind of yeah. Let's let's masses. not do anything with face paint. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, paint like raccoon. I just uh, feel like that's a that's a we should that's probably a, avoid that. Yeah, All right. Yeah, that's and here comes the Kaz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and in the most inefficient <laughs> way possible. <laughs> Huzzah! <laughs> this is a dangerous group for me to be with. I, I you don't see me tipping it. No, because I, I can push you around. I can't push these guys around. That's They're just right. They're <laughs> based on their own things. <laughs> oh, you know. Look, right. I'm trying to play some root. I understand. And so am I. <laughs> maybe you know. <laughs> maybe just maybe a little extra. So after we are done making a character, or after the world, then we're going to make characters. Okay. okay. And as we make characters, we're also going to be playing the backstory game, where yeah. you guys are going to be drawing a card. It'll have a prompt, and it'll say something like, "You and you know," it might say, "You and dirt." went on a mission together that went sideways. Okay. What was it and who was it, you know, and it was against the the bird people. What was it? You are know? you specific for roots or are you some of the backstory cards? The backstory cards are designed to be generic, but okay. you can update them and shift them so that they will work with any game system. So we are gonna have that available for everybody. Another ten dollar tip. Um, uh, Mighty Dave just tipped ten dollars. Thank you, Dave. <sighs> Raccoon <laughs> suit slash blackmail material. <laughs> yeah, or cancellation material, more like it. I mean, have you seen some of our holiday streams? I mean Steven like, has if someone wants to blackmail me, it's uh, it's all out there. <laughs> I'll say Steven has blackmail material yeah, in you, videos from You already have Smith in a dress singing Let oh, It Go. Yeah, Frozen. Yeah. You're like smoking a cigarette in an Elsa dress. After you bang Frosty. Yeah. What else what else do you need? Yeah, come on. This is like a step down. It's just a raccoon. Uh, so um, um so, the, so that's actually interesting about building, didn't melt for building the world before the character. So it almost it almost you almost don't want to even have a character ready. Well, I understand the, because the narrative could look, inform that. Look, I understand that you guys are gonna have nat playbooks that you're naturally drawn to. Yes, and that's absolutely. totally fine. Absolutely. I mean that's totally acceptable and totally understandable. Oh, I should say though, 
it is a rule in all Powered by the Apocalypse games. There can only be one of a playbook and a table. Okay. So, oh, that's good to know. So if somebody else, if you really, if you have your mind, you know, heart set on being the, can I be ranger? You know, the ranger, and is somebody else wants to be a ranger, you, one of you has to pick. Semper Epic's question uh, correct? Does supplemental rule books have rules that allow you to create a world in the? Of the game based on playing the board game, it it, it uses the board game map from the board uh, I was game. Like, that's yes. kind of interesting. Oh god, roll for combat. Uh, so, oh, Steve, I'm coming through. <laughs> my my brother is a host, Hollywood costume designer. I can easily get you a raccoon suit to rent for the stream for like nothing. Right. Actually, this is true. Steven's brother is like it a is true. a an award winning uh, like oh. Oscar like Academy Award winning. Costume designer, like in real, like full yes, on this Hollywood. This is very true. That's awesome. suit. And it's a rental. Perfect. Love it. Love Out of Hollywood. I can smell Nothing smell bad smell. ever happened there. No. Um, <laughs> awesome. We're going big time. Oh, okay. Well, Steven, we'll, we'll have Steven to. Steven's a man coming through. Plushies and now a no, green suit? We'll have to discuss this. Um, so after we make the characters, or after hey, we make. Could you get like four of those? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I already sweat enough. One, I don't two, need to three, be not it. Um, yeah, yeah, one, not, two, three, I am not, not putting it. on a suit. Yeah. So, can we get a cat suit for Derek? Why am I a cat? Because well, the, the mar- you did play a, the Marquis in yeah. uh, the root board game we just played. Yeah, but I also I also play the Airy Dynasties and the Lizard Cult. What are we gonna do? Make like a animal that's <laughs> every part. Hybrid mutation. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm a manticore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can make you a bear. How about that? Um, so you know what? They are the GM. <laughs> one drink is all that's been had. Um, I had two. Oh, okay. Well, well, one of them was worth two. Okay, so it's a three. <laughs> all right. Um, this could very well be the end of Night's Last Call. You know? <laughs> so I, you know, I'm glad. I'm glad that before we go out, that we'll all we'll get to hang out in this cool location. Um, and very we'll, suits. We'll get those sound issues. We'll get those sound issues sort of uh, dealt with, so that you guys make sure that you guys can hear the cancellation the moment it happens. <laughs> um, and um, so, it's real cool. Says a cameo of Barrick. <laughs> Oh, that's actually yes. kind of funny. It's actually kind of funny. Um, and he can't swim. <laughs> it's a dirt brownie. <laughs> he can't swim. So, uh, anyways, when you guys make your characters, we're going to sort of use the world that we built, and we're going to build up the initial situations. Because, again, I don't have a plan for the... Now, do, does the game itself have APs? Nope. 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 Okay, I was wondering. Is it, is I mean, there, there's the, there's these quick starts, okay. which are actually pretty cool. They kind of remind me of old school modules. Okay. Like, you actually build the woodland. Oh wow! Like, yeah, like really. Procedures are all in the book. Yeah, and it, it kind of uses a similar thing. Derek, that looks like those dang terrain trials you should have damn bought. Oh! oh no, they were on sale. I was next to it and I was like, I should buy some. I was like, Ah, Derek bought them. It's fine. I don't need to buy them. Couldn't, couldn't pull the trigger. I couldn't pull the. They didn't discount them, and they were so expensive. And Bob's whispering in his ears, "You don't need it." Yeah, and plus, yeah, Bob, I was with Bob. We don't, we no, don't here's the problem. It. It's, it's, it's your fault. I was with Bob on Sunday, not you. Sorry. Yeah, you would have you would have bought two packs. If I had been with you, yeah, we would have each gotten one. Yeah. No, hundred percent. Because like, why get one? We should get two. Derek looked over. He's like, I don't see anything. He's like, it's not worth it. Yeah, he Bob. Bob is just with Bob is like on my shoulder, just being like, yeah, you're so cheap. Stop anything. You should. Uh, you spent so much money. You only bought a thousand dollars of stuff. For such as yours, should we bring hex tiles to build out the map? Um, how, do you, how do you want to do that? How do you how do you want to do this? Do yeah, this that's thing? a great question. Um. We'll probably, yeah, we could probably do something with the hex tiles. Which, kind of, by the way, the color kind of ones would have been great because they could have seen it on camera, mm-hmm. but now it's just going to look like scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be clear, uh, it's not really a hex tile. It is really a point oh, crawl. Sure. So right? we just bought the root game for the, the, the affiliation link. Oh, nice. Awesome. Thanks, Dominicus. Um, yeah, we have an affiliate link for so root good in the up. description below. It's not the cheapest PDF. It's like 20 bucks. Um, but... Um, uh, it's a really cool game, and yeah. you know, again, you really want to go deeper into it. Also, too, as we get prepared for this actual play, um, um, we'll probably have like a channel specifically dedicated to the actual play on our Patreon. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And, Absolutely. and we always yeah. seem to do that. People put yeah. mo- uh, lots it's of It's been a while. I'll we'll remember how to add that. Yeah, yeah. We'll we'll figure out how to do that. George, but um, George will run that channel. But if this. you are yeah. a member of our Patreon, and if you're not, check us out: patreoncom slash to kind of. Get uh, into our exclusive Discord, where you can basically ask me any questions. If you buy, if you pick up the rules, or you already have the rules, and you want to talk root with me, um, let's do it. Because you know, obviously, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of this game. I'm a big fan of the board game. Um, 
uh, and I love Powered by the Apocalypse, but I haven't played it before. So yeah. it's really, really awesome to be able to sort of learn with you as we sort of go, you know, kind of go through this um, and kind of really learn the ins and outs of the system. But more important than that, I mean, what I think what we really want to do here and what people have been sort of asking for, Bob, yeah. is we want to get we want to do an actual play that's not an AP. I for sure want to do an actual play that's not an AP, uh, but also we haven't we haven't done PBT except for these little one shot sort of things like my birthday bash yeah. and whatnot. Like I think Power of the Apocalypse can be really fun. If you haven't seen Derek GM Power of the Apocalypse, actually, that's, it's actually pretty exciting how, how well he can do it. And you obviously at home can learn some stuff from that. Um, so I think I think you at home will li like to listen to it. And I think we will actually enjoy this a lot too. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and GM Scott, twenty five dollar tip says better late than never. Now, GM, Scott GM Scott just got here. to watch on the uh, video on the man. I suggest maybe just skipping like. The <laughs> no, furry, just Watch skip off. the furry part. <laughs> go um, straight to the raccoons. Yes, go straight to the raccoons. Um, so, yeah, I think it'll be I think it'll be a fun experience for you all. We're gonna try to figure out fun ways that you all can sort of, with polls or tip goals, kind of guide and influence the game. Yeah, we are not. Let me be clear. We are not doing Wheel of Pain. Yes. Oh, uh, shudder. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Gosh, a little PTSD we, uh, from that one. We were going to do that, but then uh, animal cruelty and all that. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, what we kind of decided, but, you know, a lot of people did enjoy, you know, sort of the, the, the Rule of Pain, or the Rule of Pain, um, the, the Wheel of Pain. But Wheel of Pita. I think people we, we, like we, the, we, uh, we, we, we agree. Wheel of Pita. The Wheel of Pita. <laughs> 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 we agree that... Uh, Wheel of Pain is probably better for really short one shots, one shots, or maybe two shots. You know, charity types, uh, charity, charity streams, uh, yep. right? Yeah. I think the way we, we did like the hatch off. Well, the the yeah. way we did hatch off was nice because it, it felt like it was more of like like a drive, and I think that's where the the, the tips in here can like sort of adjust things. Like, okay, well, Bob's drive seems to be leaning this way. Can we like do this? Or Smith seems to be really sort of playing into this trope. Mm -hmm. Can we? So we play with that as, a, yeah. as an audience. And I actually really liked uh, the example Derek gave, which was like, you know, let's say we meet, you know, someone from like uh, uh, the dynasty, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and this person's like, oh, yeah, I'll help you out if you help me out, right? And then it becomes like a, 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 yeah. a tip goal. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas they want us to do in order to get no. what we need. Or... The tip goal is, you know, is the guy being legit or will he betray the party? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Right. right. And and they, the home yeah. audience, the audience picks can, the beat. gets the pick. Oh, you know? okay, that's yeah. cool. I like yeah. so like a little big, like, it. Yeah. Because we can't do it for everything because it's too hard to set it up it's, all the time. Yeah, because Derek has to run the poll. Like, how's that even? Right. Happen? We don't have a producer, so yeah, right. I, I have to do everything from you know or from, like, from my. Yeah, we set the typical uh, beforehand. That's not like an instantaneous thing that we can just do. But it could be for those big kind of yes. plot developments yes. where that's these guys, not the GM, gets the pick. Yeah. So exactly, Frost Jack has an exact. Um, they're. They said tips, tips as, as an oracle. Tips as an oracle. Yeah, which I, is exactly I like right. that too. I like uh, that a lot. By oracle, by the way, remember check out our video. Uh, uh, how to use oracles, not the class from Pathfinder Two, but random tables. So there, if there's ever a situation where it's like a big thing for the, the the game, and I think it would be fun to, in the words of John Harper, to disclaim decision making and basically leave it up to chance. Those are situations where I might normally go to an oracle. You know what? I don't know what this NPC's motivation is. And I think it'd be more fun for me and for everybody here if I pull out one of my oracles tables and roll on this D100 or D1000 chart and determine what that NPC's motivation is. Oh, they're trying to restore their family's honor. You know, oh, they're trying to recover a lost jewel, whatever. But what we could do instead is utilize the chat yeah, okay. and have like two or three options and let them decide where kind of maybe some of the major story beats go. And we might be able to do one or two of those a session, and that'll be fun for us. And it'll be kind of a challenge yeah. for all of us right. because now we have to we have to, yeah. we have yeah, to we have to sort of react that's the truth. To the character into that. Right, that's now the truth. And yep. so like the, the 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 it'll be a challenge for all of us uh, as players to sort of say like, okay chat, where you know where are we going? Where are you taking us next? Um, and I think that'll be a lot of fun. So. Absolutely. Um, all right. So, as exciting as all this was, yeah. <laughs> What's the schedule? We are not. We are not. We're not starting right away um, because next week, Bob is next Tuesday. I should say yeah, is Fourth of July. July. Fourth of July and yep. America. And America and um, <laughs> America. But in addition to that, um, you know, uh, there's fireworks and celebrations and you know people with families. Yep. So uh, there's going to be no... I might stream maybe from home. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, 
<laughs> you know what? He's, he's going full trash panda. <laughs> he's getting into character oh God, right now. <laughs> um, so the um, t- next Tuesday is July 4th. I don't know if I'm going to stream or not. The following Tuesday, which is July um, 11th, 11th. 11th, Aaron is going to be on vacation with his family. Okay. Again. So we're not going to be playing then. But then July 18th is when we're going to be back. Now, we're still going to do some live streams in between there. Yes. But the game, the show, Session Zero, will start July 18th. Yep. So that's world building, character building. Right. That's going to be world building and character building. And again. I'm really uh, excited to see the world building because otherwise it would be a pretty short session, I think. Right. Well, that too also could be really fun for the patrons that are listening in because Mm -hmm. that's when a lot of tip type suggestions could come in yeah, from the from the patrons like yeah, true. oh I got a great idea for what you guys are talking about there and stuff like that. We start putting those into to the sessions. Yeah, so absolutely. I think that's great. Um, and you know so stay tuned be in for those for yeah. that session zero. And again, the Patreon is gonna be the best place for you to have sort of a fun in you know kind of uh, ability to influence this because again, we're off the rails here. Uh, there's no adventure path. So there's no I don't have that same kind of like pressure because you know not only part of the I mean, little side here, but part of the reason why I liked, I also liked to keep the adventure path kind of where going with the adventure path is, because that's part of the reason why people, you know, you know, tuned in to watch it, is to see what happens when our group goes and does something. Yep. If we're playing, they were really looking for that authentic Quest for a Frozen Flame experience. Yes. Uh, with all the encounters that were not fake. <laughs> that's right. Well, we did, we did kind of radically rebuild Quest for the Frozen Flame, but that's my point. Um, you know, that, that we, here we have, you know, Anything goes, so yep. we can we can go in any direction that the story goes to, and, and also a l- lot less prep, and it's a lot less prep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's all and, and no VTT, so it's really easy. So it's really good for that. Yeah. Um, to Thursday, we're gonna be live with our normal live stream with me back at home. We're gonna be doing Pathfinder Two: The Monk. Ooh, okay. Um, that was uh, what our uh, our tip, our high tipper picked for our last. Um, Last time we did Pathfinder 2, which was before Origins, um, and uh, they decided to go with the monk. So we're going to be talking about the history of the monk, how the monk originated from all the way back, and then kind of disappeared for you know, like the 90s. The mechanical history of the monk is super interesting. Agreed. Agreed. Um, Lots of very different plays. Yeah, and we'll also uh, what will be an interesting story is sort of uh, uh, the monk, how the monk almost missed fourth edition entirely, and a lot of people actually never even realized there was a monk in fourth edition because it, you know it I came know in so late. It's not everyone's favorite class, but like I thought the four E monk and. and Design was very cool. Yeah, and then and then we'll then of course wrap it up by going into the Pathfinder's two uh, Pathfinder Second Edition monk. In my opinion, one of the best monks they've ever made. Yep. Um, and we can talk about how fun that class is. Maybe it's not the most powerful class, but it is pretty really fun. And we, we'll talk about some of the you know the mechanical interactions as we always do with Pathfinder two. So definitely looking forward to that. Sounds good. Wow, how many uh, monks do we have in NR? You don't know this offhand? No, but it's more than zero. More than zero. You heard here, folks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and real quick, I just want to say, um, if you want to make sure that you catch our root game, uh, we're going to be... Um, uh, 18th? We're going to be live every Tuesday. Uh, we might miss one yeah. Tuesday there, but it'll be pre-planned. The goal is to go from anywhere from six to eight sessions. Yep. It really depends on the story, the beats, how well you all are still enjoying things. If if everyone's showing up and the story seems to be really fresh and we're all really into it, we'll keep going for you know until we reach a great part. But if we reach a great natural story ending and it's the seventh session and we all agree that, that was a really great session, you know we'll 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 you know hand in our hats and say yeah, we'll that was that literally. was a good spot. We'll play the next. You may have a raccoon hat. <laughs> literally, you may have a raccoon <laughs> it hat. Might be um, you might, it might be a rental. Might be a rental. I'll hand it in, but then I have to actually turn it back. Correct, because it was a rental. Time. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, but so make sure you like and. Uh, subscribe, and if you do subscribe, make sure to click the bell icon so that you're notified anytime we post a new video or when we're going about to go live. We go live Tuesdays and Thursdays, 7 p.m. Eastern, almost every week, and we usually throw in a, a, sometimes a Sunday or a, um, a Monday or. And the when- best way to get notified of those, those secret streams is when if you're a part of the Patreon, because that's when Derek posts first about those secret. Right. Off the cuff streams that he jumps in on. Yeah, and if and if you like our content, but you really want to get really, really deep into everything that the Knights of Last Call offer. That's what the Patreon is going to be uh, your best bet for. Uh, in addition to getting bonus videos, exclusive streams, um, the ability to chat with 
all of us, and well as our you know kind of exclusive community of 300 people. It's not a public Discord; it's just a private Discord for just our Patreon members. We also have at our higher tiers some really really cool unique options. At our $10 level or champion level, you have access to our Northern Reaches Pathfinder 2 Mega Game, which has over 100 players. Mm, um, 95. 95. Who <laughs> sure knows uh, that number? Off the top. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm logging them in daily. <laughs> 26 GMs? Uh, there's 43, I think. Yeah, so so 95 players, 43 GMs. You do the math on that. Um, and we're getting like three to four sessions a day, I feel like. Three sessions a day is like the average. Yeah, is the average. Okay. Is the average. Yeah, and so this is a community Pathfinder 2 game. It uses a bunch of custom rules um, that uh, mostly were created by Smith um, and sort of our some of our playtesting in uh, earlier Pathfinder 2 campaigns to give the game kind of a little bit more of an MMO feel. So it's a little bit of a mix of an old school campaign, a little bit MMO, a little bit Pathfinder Society, and also a lot of Knights of Last Call. And it, it's a very agency-driven campaign, and we, we a lot of people have really, really come to really enjoy it. And yep. so I really recommend checking that out. So we got a lot of different options for you all across our tiers. So make sure to check us out. Um, all right, uh, Dirt. Yes. Bob. Yes. What What are you thinking about making? Scoundrel or the Raider? That's, That's the from Viking the Raider. That's yeah. like the two that I was leaning towards. So, so kind of violent, destructive. I haven't looked at everything from the expansion. I, I looked at everything in the main core. The Scoundrel was the most interesting that I found there. The Raider was the one that you suggested, and I was kind of like, dang, that sounds pretty cool, too. So uh, those are the only ones I haven't looked enough into the Traveler and Outsiders yet to, to see if there's anything else. I was thinking about Tinker. Tinker. So that's like the... Um, in the I was saying, it really right, fits right. the motif. <laughs> that's like the inventor, right? Tinkers. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Someone did say if we do Tinker, we will have root in space. <laughs> yeah, it's almost like, if you're going to get to root in space, it's the tinker. Go <laughs> to uh, space. And um, Nick, Smith, do you guys have any uh, thoughts about any uh, playbooks that had leaped out at you at all? I did like the the more destructive ones. And most of the things that I've... Well, you guys know most of oh, the characters I've played in the... Be. I know. <laughs> most of the characters I've played in the past have not been the the big hammer swinging damage dealing. So I want to do something outside of the normal with that. You know, when we played Descent, I was the the thief going around, picking up the treasure tokens and stuff like that, hiding in the, in the shadows. When we did Pathfinder 2, I was kind of the paladin that wasn't really swinging for a lot of damage. So I'm kind of trying to get a little Got out it. of my norm to do something a little Got more it. destructive. So you literally break out of your shell. Yes, pretty much, yes. There, so Smash it. Or, I, think, uh, I, think the the I think the Arbiter has that's, a move that's, 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 this one. that's like speak softly and yeah. carry a big stick. Yeah. That's, that's what I was looking at. That's what I was yeah. But I also have not looked into the expansion. Got part, it. So there yeah. might be something there that also is quite as destructive that I want to And make. what about you over there, Trash Panda Man? Trash Panda. Ranger. Ranger. Yeah, I'm going to take the uh, the longbow, and my weapon skill will be trick shot. Look, you've already ruined it, so Derek did not build your character. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't write down the sheet. Oh. You didn't write it down on the sheet. I just want to make sure people keep their options open in yeah. case something really, really... Well, um, I really oh, want to see okay. To be honest, no, 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 no. I'm flexible to playbook. Yeah. I just I want the trash bag. Uh, uh, Domin Dominicus Free says, more importantly, what species yeah. are people thinking of? Now, Smith, I think we know the answer to yours. Yes. Yeah. Raccoon. Raccoon. Nick, do you have any particular animal species that really looking, calls to you? I was looking at the fox. Okay. One of the ones, but... You know, being destructive, like somebody mentioned a badger, and it's like that's that's not a bad a badger. Badger arbiters, that's literally the classic. That's that's kind of what I said. It's like yeah, yeah. yeah. Bob. I'm, I'm either doing fox or bunny. Oh, like that, yeah. classic. All right, yeah. Good hedgehog. Nice. Hedgehog. That's cool. I like that. That's a good. Idea. A little little bit of an oddball, just like uh, just like you. <laughs> All right. Well, um, yeah, I, I think. Um, uh, yeah, Badger is awesome. I actually I do not own the Marauders expansion for the board game, so I, I have not had an opportunity yet to play around with the uh, pieces. Ryan said he's Team Beaver. Uh, th th <laughs> Beavers are just good. <laughs> Beavers are sweet. Yeah, um, and in fact, actually, one of the things that we'll really get to decide too during world creation is like, what are the factions mm -hmm. that are really at play here? I'm I want to really let the world decide where I'm going to be in my character as well. Like I don't want to just pick something like that doesn't even fit what's right. going on. And that's that's kind of where I was going with. Yeah. It's like you know like. I mean, to be fair, that'll also sort of you know guide your thing. If you end up with being like, I want chaos and I want to destroy things, and you know, like, and I'm kind of like this ranger shooter, but you know, like kind of like grim hunter, bounty hunter, right? Well, okay, obviously we're not going with the like. Oh, you will go, you will go from town, you will go from town to town, bringing yeah, this peace. This is not going to be a peaceful campaign. It yeah. sounds like. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I. Uh, 
I'm a big fan of the uh, the otters. Ryan is what you're thinking of is the is the mercantile faction. Yeah, the otters, very cool in the game. But but again, like I said, in the game, no one's good. I think this is something I think that's really important to note. Yeah, none of it's the like, factions are good. None of the factions are good. None of them are bad. Right. They are just what they are. You know, there's no alignment. And you know, you could look at the Airy dynasties and say. Oh, they're you know a, a ruthless you know regime that's come back and invaded the land, and it's like yeah, but it's also kind of like you know Daenerys Targaryen saying like no, like this is our land, and you know we had a we pledged to defend us people, and then we got take kicked out by foreign invaders. Like w you know, would you rather have them ruling over you? You know, or like the otters are the British cats. The otters are like um, you know like uh, merchants. But it's like they're insidious, you know. People call them the Walmart, you know, where it's like, <laughs> you know, they come in, they undercut, you know, they come, they undercut everybody, and then all of a sudden all the locals go to business and they, you know, try to get you in on there. You know, Ryan says otters are Walmart, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, 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 no one is good, and what's really cool about it is, you and the chat are gonna really decide what happens to the woodland because one vagabond can easily shift the game. But a team of Vagabonds, all working together, that's enough power and, and you know, persuasion and potency that you could potentially upset the entire balance of the war. You know, it, it's sufficient to say that, like, if you make your bet and say, you know, we, we kind of want the cats to win, mm -hmm. you could make that happen, you know? Um, and vice versa, you know, like if the cats are winning, we you're... want everyone else to lose. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it'll be really, really fun and interesting. And I hope you are there to join us. So again, July 18th will be our session zero. Where we're going to be doing world creation and character creation. We're going to have, of course, a bunch of live streams before then uh, with me talking about RPGs and Pathfinder 2 and game philosophy. And there was almost a, there was a slim chance that I was going to play Final Fantasy 16, but then I found out that it's an action RPG and you have to run around and push buttons. And I said, screw that. Oh, those games where you have to push buttons. That's just like, what are we even doing here? Right. I, I want to just line up. I used to be able to play Final Fantasy with one hand. Just holding down the A. Bloop, 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 bloop. I love that. Where, what happened to that? Now I gotta run around, and execute a combo. You gotta get it, gotta build up your combo meter and then push the triangle square so that you can execute the thing. I don't, I don't, ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. So, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thanks again to you all for coming out and supporting us tonight. Thank you again to my amazing cast. Um, they are going to certainly uh, provide us with an interesting and fun time. Uh, <laughs> oh, it'll be interesting, all right. And uh, we'll, we'll remains to be seen whether or not we, we make it to the end before YouTube demonetizes us. But, um, you don't I, see us here, find us on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we might be going to Twitch sooner than we thought. So. Maybe um, something else if we all get raccoon suits. Uh, <laughs> please, please do not tip more for that goal. I don't need to encourage this behavior. Um, <laughs> plus, that wouldn't even make sense if you're all in raccoon suits. Let's see if it's involved now. It's, it's a done deal. You just need to accept this. Uh, all right. All right, everybody. We will see you on the Patreon. We'll see you on the Discord. If not, I'll see you Thursday. And hopefully, we'll see you July 18th That's in right. a couple weeks. Yes. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for uh, joining us. We'll see you next time on Nights of Last Call. Peace out, everybody.